Hello friends. How are you all? This is Ani What Ifs. So we are back with an amazing movie part 1 on what if Naruto was the son of water goddess. Here is summary. After being neglected by Kakashi, Naruto decides to show his true self and show Konoha what he's capable of. Imagine his shock when he finds out that his future bride is the Mizukage. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Konoha Hospital. The 14-year-old Naruto was currently arguing with his so-called sensei in the hallway of the hospital. What do you mean you can't train me for the finals? Naruto yelled while Kakashi who had his book in his face sighed. Because Naruto I'm already training Sasuke and I can't help you both. Plus he's facing that ninja from Suna and he needs all the help he can get. The copy nin responded while Naruto looked at him in shock. He wasn't even gonna try to help him. What the hell do you mean he needs all the help? I'm facing that Bakaniji in the first rounds dammit and I don't even know how to fight him. The blonde screamed. Again Kakashi doesn't bother to look at Naruto's who had a look of anger and hurt on his face. But that all changes when Kakashi says these words. I know that and so what? You're not ready to take the next step as a shinobi and perhaps getting beat by Niji will wake you up to reality. Sasuke is the only one on the team who has what it takes to be a real ninja and I won't waste my time with someone who can't even control his own chakra. I'm sorry Naruto, but you have no talent nor do you deserve to be a ninja. He said but failed to realize that Naruto was trembling in rage with his head down. His eyes became slitted as he realized that Kakashi didn't give a shit about him. He was just like the other villagers and teachers, minus Aruka in the academy that ruined his academics. The only reason you're a ninja in the first place is because the Sandane felt sorry for you and he said until smack. Naruto smacked the book out of Kakashi's hand shocking the Jounin and saw the look on Naruto's face. His eyes were filled with anger, hatred, rage, and hurt. If looks could kill, then Kakashi would be dead right now. Naruto just looked him with a dark expression on his face. He was clenching and unclenching his hands trying to keep himself from socking his sensei in the face. Is that so? I have no talent as ninja huh? I'm not ready to take the next step as a ninja just because I'm not like Sasuke. He said raising the tone on his voice. Kakashi realized that everyone in the hospital was hearing Naruto raise his voice and started to speak up. Please Naruto calm down he tried to say only for the pissed blonde to cut him off. Shut up. He yelled out making the man's eyes widen in shock. I will not come and I will not listen to a fucking thing you say Haddock. Let me tell you something you piece of shit. I may not have talent like your fucking Achiha, but at least I'm not a fucking coward who's a jutsu stealing bitch. I have done more for this team than that spoiled brat has. I'm the one who got your sorry ass out of Zabuza's water prison not Sasuke. I'm the one who beat Haku not Sasuke. And not only that, in the forest of death, I took on Orochimaru while your so-called Ichiha and Haruno froze up like little bitches. But do you want to know what pisses me off more? He growled out while Kakashi looked at Naruto with the same shocked expression. You didn't follow your own damn motto those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are lower than trash. I guess that makes you and those brats lower than trash because unlike them I took that motto to heart. You are nothing but a fucking hypocrite. He yelled out at the silver-haired Jounin. Look Naruto I Kakashi tried to say again, but got cut off again. Save your bullshit for someone who cares asshole because as of now I'm done with this team. So go ahead and train that fucking brat. I don't need your training. I'll find someone who will train me and then not only will I kick Niji's ass, I'll kick Sasuke's and that Tanuki from Suna's ass also. If I don't make Chunin then I'll ask for a team transfer. I'm pretty sure guy would make a better sensei than you. After all, he trained a dead last that kicked Sasuke's ass and almost killed Gara even if he is a little odd in the head. He then walks off while the doctors moved out of his way because they didn't want to face his wrath. Kakashi tried to grab Naruto's shoulder only for the blonde to swipe at his hand with his now clawed hand. Kakashi slowly backed away from the snarling blonde. Touch me and I'll rip your fucking hand off you son of a bitch. I can't believe you of all people was my father's student. He said and again walked off leaving a wide-eyed Kakashi in the hallway. Little did they know, Mei Terumi, the god Mizukage of Kurigakur was watching and couldn't help but smile when she saw her, so-called deceased fiancé was still alive, but frowned when she realized that the council lied to her about him dying with the Yandame who arranged a marriage with her and his son, and also growled when she saw his sensei brush him off. Don't worry my maelstrom, if he won't help you then I will. She said in shunshins out of the hospital. Naruto was now in a forest no longer wearing that black jumpsuit, but a black one with fingerless gloves sitting under a tree branch with a blank expression on his face. I should have known that bastard wouldn't teach me anything. Hell the only thing he did teach me was tree walking while going to train the Ichiha in private. That fucking asshole. No talent my ass. 
I was the one who saved his sorry ass from Zabuza when he trapped him in that water prison, while well, that team and Hirano wanted to run away like little bitches. He then closes his eyes and falls asleep. I'll show him no talent when I kick Niji's, Sasuke's, and that Sand Nin's ass in the finals and make Chuanin. It's time I stop playing the fool and show Kanoha what I can really do. He mumbles. He then finds himself in his mindscape which was in the form of a forest. He opens his eyes and finds himself resting his head on the lap of a red hair, red-eyed woman who in his eyes looked like a goddess. She wore a ruby red kimono with flowers on it and had flawless skin. She smiled back at Naruto who did the same as well. Kid we have to find a way to get rid of that seal the hebe put on you in the forest of death. Kaiubi said while Naruto nods. I know Kaiu-chan. It's been screwing up with my chakra control and I can only stay in contact with you for a few minutes, so what do we do? Naruto asked. Kaiubi thought about it and was about to speak until a voice spoke. Simple my other half, we must become one again. That's when another version of Naruto appeared, but there's a difference. Instead of being 5'3 he was 5'6 and was built like an athletic swimmer. There was hardly any baby fat on his face and the whisker marks on his face were gone and he also had deep blue slitted cerulean eyes and canines that jutted from his upper lip. His hairstyle and facial appearance was similar to the Yandames, Minato as a kid. He also wore a black jumpsuit. Hello my other half. How many years has it been? Naruto's other half said while he smiles. Seven years, he started to say, but felt a pull in his mindscape by the seal. Look we only have a few seconds before I'm pulled out by that accursed seal. We need to become one again. Naruto said while his other half nods. Hi let's do this. The other half replies and reaches his hand out as does Naruto. When their hands grasp each other, their bodies glow. Kaiubi's eyes widen in shock when a white light surrounds them, and the white orb grows larger and larger until it covers the entire mindscape. Outside Naruto's body, Naruto's resting body is surrounded by a blue cocoon made of chakra, and it slowly grows white. After a few minutes, cracks then started to surround the cocoon, and then it shattered, and there stood the new and improved Naruto wearing a new outfit. He was now 5'6 wearing a dark blue long sleeve jacket with pockets on it and a silver line going down the sleeves. He also wore black Anbu-styled pants with a silver line going down the middle and Anbu-styled sandals that stopped below his knees. He also wore a black muscle shirt that hugged his body and wore it like a second skin and it showed off his chest and abs. On the back of his jacket was the picture of the Kaiubi in a crouching position as well as the five elemental kanjis for water, wind, lightning, fire, and earth. He also had black fingerless gloves on and they had metal plates on them. He also had crimson highlights in his bangs. Naruto walks over to the lake and looks at himself. He smirks and looks at his new clothes. He then stretches his arms and sighs in relief. Man it's good to be whole once again. I don't know what I'd do if I had to play the fool for one more day. I better inform Oji-san that I'm back and ask him about this seal that's cutting me off from kaiu chan He says but stops for a moment and performs a ram seal. Small trees started to form around him but stopped when they only reached to his height. He sighs and wipes a bead of sweat off his brow. Bam. I must have lost a lot of my strength when my soul split in half. I guess I have to regain my strength again. He says until he hears a voice that sounds like an angel's. Perhaps I can help you Naruto-kun. Said the soft and serene voice. Naruto turns around and sees someone whom he can only describe as a goddess in human form. It was the only way to describe the woman that was in his line of vision. She had long red russet colored hair which was pulled up into an elegant topknot on the top of her head and a bang came down from the top of her head and covered her right eye. Her eyes were a beautiful jade green, a small nose and beautiful lips which had blue lipstick on them, all of which were perfect for her face. She also had on a full body fishnet suit and over it, she wore what appeared to be a one-piece blue garment that hugged her herglas body and showed off her flawless cream-colored sexy legs. This woman was without a doubt the epitome of beauty and Naruto couldn't help but blush. Mei, who was watching his eyes wander on her figure, giggled at his dazed look and smiled. Are you done checking me out now? She asked which caused Naruto to blink for a while, and when he realized what he was doing, he turned red and jumped back. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to stare at you like that. He said while she giggles and walks up to him until they're a few feet from each other. Naruto had to keep his eyes from ogling her cleavage and chest. It's okay. I expect my future husband to look at me like that. She said. Oh I see wait what yelled Naruto whose eyes were the size of dinner plates while Mei just smiled at him. I'm your fiancé Naruto-kun. She said and Naruto did the only thing he could do. He fainted while Mei looked at his unconscious form. She sighs and rubs the back of her neck. Maybe I shouldn't have been so forward. She says to herself. A few hours later, Naruto slowly opens his eyes and finds his head resting on her lap while she smiles down at him. I'm glad you're finally awake Naruto-kun. Mei says while Naruto sits up and rubs his head in embarrassment. 
Sorry for fainting, but I could have sworn you said that I was your fiancé. He said and she nods. Yes I did say that Naruto-kun. You and I were supposed to be engaged, but certain members in this village lied to me about you dying, and I need to talk to the Hokage about it. She said while caressing his face while he had to hold in a shudder. I see, but I don't think Saruoji had nothing to do with it. That's not his way of acting. I should know he did train me before that incident occurred. He said while she blinked at him in confusion. Okay. Let's go meet him and after that I'll help you with your training. She said and wraps an arm around him pulling him close to her ample chest while he blushes a little and the disappear in a swirl of water. Okage Tower. Saratobi was currently doing paperwork while glaring at the rest that was piled up on his desk and on his floor. I swear Minato died just to get away from this accursed paperwork. He muttered. That's when a swirl of water appeared in his office and he jumped out of his seat, pulling out a kunai. When it cleared, he saw Mei the god in Mizukage with a boy who looked like a younger version of Minato. Hiruzen blinks for a while and looks at him for a while before his eyes widened. Naruto. He asked while the boy nodded and grins. What's up Saroji? I'm back. He said. Saratobi blinks for a while and then smiles. I see. That's good to hear Naruto. It must have been hell for you to play the fool for the last seven years. He replied while the blonde sighs in frustration. I'm just glad to be whole once again. Do you have any idea how tough it was for me to do it? The only difference is my strength and knowledge. I lost half of it after what happened to me when I was seven. He replied while Saratobi nods. I see. Ah Mizukij Dono I apologize for ignoring you. What can I do for you? He asks while Mei has a serious expression on her face. You can start by explaining why you sent me a false document stating that my fiancé died along with his father, Minato Namikas, during the Kaiubi attack 14 years ago and cancelled the arranged marriage. She asked in a dark tone. An action like can be considered an act of war. Mei growled out while Saratobi looked at her with a look of confusion on his face. I'm sorry Mizukij Dono, but I don't recall sending you a document and cancelling an arranged marriage. He replied while Mei raised an eyebrow while Hiruzen smirks. I may be old Mizukij Dono, but I'm not senile. Do you happen to have the documents with you? He asked while she nods and pulls it out of her garment and hands it to Hiruzen who takes it. He opens the paper up and looks at it. When he looks down at the Hokage signature his eyes widen and narrow. He then looks up at the Mizukage. I'm sorry to say Mizukage Dono, but this isn't my seal of approval. This seal is a fake. He says and her eyes widened. What? But I could have sworn are you sure? I mean the elders of this village had an anbu with a blank mask sent this. Naruto's and Saratobi's eyes widen when she said elders and an anbu with a blank mask. Naruto's eyes narrow as does Saratobi's. I'm going to kill that crippled bastard and his flunkies. Naruto said in a dark tone. You're gonna have to get in line Naruto because I'm gonna deal with them first. Those idiots could have caused a war for doing this. Saratobi growled and smashed his fist onto the desk. Mei's eyes widen in shock. So you didn't send that anbu with a blank mask. Hiruzen shook his head. No, I didn't. Mizukij Dono on behalf of myself and Kanahagakur no Sato, I offer you my deepest apology. I promise you once I get enough proof on those fools I'll have them publicly executed for treason and nearly starting a war. If not then I'll have them sent to you in chains and you may deal with them. I know it isn't much now, but unless I find proof of this then there's little I can do. He says while she nods. That was when Naruto spoke up. Speaking of seals Oji-san, there's this seal on me that's screwing up my chakra and contact with Kaiu-chan. Naruto then lifts up his shirt, showing off his six-pack and getting a small blush out of the Mizukage. Saratobi walks over to Naruto, kneels down, and looks at it. He notices five extra seals on the Shiki Fuin and HMMS. The Gaju Fuin, five elemental seals. Looks like my student Arachimaru's work. He mutters. Thus give me a minute to get rid of this Naruto. He says and his fingertips glow blue in his right hand. Brace yourself Naruto, God you can, five elementals unseal. He says and thrusts his palms into Naruto's torso and removes them instantly. Naruto gasps out in pain and clutches his stomach. Sweet Kami that hurt. He cries out but can feel his chakra control return to normal. Thanks, Oji-san. Is it possible for me to get my parents' scrolls now? He asks and gets a nod from the old man. He goes to a gray vault and opens it up, pulling out three scrolls. One was yellow and had his father's jutsu, the other was red and had his mother's, and the last one contained his mother's sword, sword style, and her fighting style. Here you go Naruto, the rest are in your family's compound, but I had to seal it back due to certain people trying to break into it. Hiruzen says getting a nod from the blonde. Thanks Oji. I'll be spending the next two months training with Mei-chan, so that I can get my strength back to what it once was. He says while Saratobi had a look of confusion on his face. Shouldn't Kakashi be training you to face Nijihai Uga? He asked only to see Naruto's eyes grow cold. No. 
Unfortunately I'm not worth his time and don't have any talent. But what pissed me off was the fact that he said the only reason I became a ninja in the first place was because you pitied me. He said well Saratobi's eyes became murderous and he grinds his teeth in frustration. He was gonna have a long talk with Kakashi after the Chunin exams. I see. I'll be sure to deal with him after the finals Naruto. I wish you luck in your training and we'll see you in two months. Now I have to get back to my paperwork. He said with disdain in his voice while May sweat drops at the piles of paperwork. She had the same issue in Kiri. Naruto snorts at the sight and then grins. I think I know a way on how to get rid of your problem Siroji. Naruto says. Saratobi looks at him in shock, then appears on his knees begging scaring the blonde while an I'm tears fell from his face. Please tell me Naruto. He asks in a hysterical voice while Naruto thinks about it in mock thought while Mei just looks at him with wide eyes. I don't know Oji-san. What do I get if I tell you? Naruto asks. Anything. Access to the Hokage Vault. San and traveling rights. Name it and I'll do all in my power to grant it. He says frantically. Show this old man some mercy and tell me please. Did I mention that I always thought of you as my grandson? His lip quivers and he does the puppy eyes jutsu. Naruto however was laughing his ass off inside of his mind. Okay I'll tell you. He says while Saratobi's eyes become stars. Why not use cage bushins to finish it faster? They pass their knowledge back to the user when they disperse. He says while Saratobi's jaw drops and may just look at him. The old man then gets up from his desk and he starts banging his head on the wall while calling himself a baka. Naruto however was laughing at him but then calms down when Saratobi returns to normal. Well I'm a man of my word Naruto, so for helping me find a way to finish paperwork faster, I'm giving you your first S ranked mission pay for helping two cages deal with our worst enemies, which is that. He says pointing to the piles of paperwork. And also access to the Hokage Vault and Sanin traveling rights. He finishes. Naruto had the biggest grin on his face and was about to say something, but found himself being glomped by Mei and having his head buried into her cleavage. Yes. My future husband rid me of my biggest issue. She said in burying him even deeper into her chest. MMPH. Naruto says while waving his arms around the air, struggling to breathe and free his head from her cleavage. Saratobi was watching this and couldn't help but giggle pervertedly at the scene. Naruto you lucky bastard. If Jurei was here, he'd be flying out the window via nosebleed right now Naruto was finally able to pry himself from her cleavage and gasp for air. Caillou, who had just woken up was fuming. That slut. Who does she think she is hugging my Narukun like that? It should be me hugging him like that. She ranted while her eyes glowed red. When Mei releases him a sly smirk appears on her face. I guess that means that I'll have to reward you for helping me Naruto-kun. She says in a sexy voice while a blush appears on Naruto's face and he starts sputtering. She then leans next to his ear and whispers into it. Naruto's blush grew bigger and a trickle of blood drips down his nose. And Mei chan He says while she giggles and sets him down. She then winks at him, grabs his hand, and leads him out of the Hokage Tower while swaying her hips in his line of vision. Naruto just kept his eyes on her ass and drool escapes from the side of his mouth. Ayu however was grumbling. Her ass isn't that great. Mine is way cuter. Naruto snaps out of his daze and speaks to her in his mind. Kayu-chan are you jealous? He asks in she HMPS. Please why would I the queen of the Makai realm be jealous of an engine? I know my ass is hotter. How come you don't stare at mine like that? She asks with a pout on her face. An evil smirk appears on his face. Because I have another reason for wanting your ass. He says sending pictures in his mind of him violating her ass. She sees them, blushes and hides her ass with her tails. Hentai. Oh well I can't blame you for wanting to do that to me. Think you can convince Mei-chan to let you do that to her? She asks with a sly grin on her face which causes Naruto to nearly fall on his face. What? He yells out loud getting Mei's attention. Is something wrong Naruto-kun? She asks while they head to the forest again. Naruto looks at her and shakes his head. No Kayu-chan is being perverted. She mentions something about me doing something to you. He says and rubs the back of his head while looking away. May raises an eyebrow and stares at her fiancé. You doing what to me? She asks and Naruto gulps and motions her to lean over and she does. He whispers into her ear and after a while she blushes at the thought. Naruto moves his head away from her and she just stares at him for a while. She then grins pervertedly at him. So you like to give it a try Naruto-kun? She asks and he gives her a shocked look. Hey Mei-chan are you serious? We barely know each other. He protests while she laughs. I know I know. I don't expect us to become that intimate for a while, but if you want to we could she started to say, but Naruto waves his arms in protest. No, it's fine. W we can wait. He says laughing nervously while Mei laughs at him. You're so cute when you act like that. Anyway before we start our training let's introduce ourselves. She says getting a nod from Naruto. 
I made to Rumi, soon to be made to Rumi Namikas, Gade Mizukaj of Kuridakar. My likes are my fiancé, village, green tea, and hot springs. My dislikes are men who think women are only good for breeding, traders, and the elders of Kanoha who lied to me about the death of my fiancé. My hobbies are relaxing in hot springs, swimming, and performing tea ceremonies. My dream is to get married, have children, and know what it's like to be loved by a real man. She says while Naruto blushes. My name is Naruto Namikaze Senju. My likes are training, Raymond and Dango, Iruka sensei Oji-san, and Kayu-chan. My dislikes is most of the village, Team 7, Ichihas, rapists, and the civilians and elders of the council. My hobbies are sparring with Oji-san, morning jogs, swimming, gardening, cooking, and a lot of other things. My dreams are to become the strongest ninja to ever exist, revive my clan and have a large family. He said and May smiles. So does that mean you'll have to take on more than one wife? May asks and Naruto nods. Yeah but only those that will love me for me and not for my status or money. I hate people who do that. I hope you're okay with this Mei-chan. He replies while she thinks about it. I'm fine with it. However I want to be the one who bears your first child understand. She asks and he nods with a blush on his face. As sure. Mei smiles and kisses him on the forehead. Oh I also have this for you. No one has held this contract for a long time and is considered to be very powerful. She bites her thumb, performs a few seals, and then slams her hand onto the ground. Kuchius no jutsu. Summoning jutsu. In the puff of smoke a large silver white scroll appears, and on top of it was the head of what looked like a silver dragon with fangs. This Naruto-kun is the contract for the Akihei, Hydra, clan. They're a clan who are of a higher group of serpents, but they're related to dragons. I found it in a cave off the shores off Mizu no Kuni. Once you sign this, you'll be sent to their realm to meet their leader, so try not to upset her or she'll kill you. Mei said in a serious tone while Naruto gulps but nods. The scroll opens up and reveals a list that only had one name in it, but it was smudged, so Naruto couldn't tell whose name was on it. He then bites his thumb and smears his name on the blank space next to the smeared name and finishes it with the Senju symbol. His name glows blue on the scroll and it suddenly trembles and rolls up, shocking the blonde. The head on it comes to life and lets out a roar before disappearing in a puff of smoke as does Naruto. Mei was watching this and couldn't help but be afraid for him. I hope he's the one, Yamato no Arachi. She says and sits cross-legged onto the grass. Meanwhile, Naruto appears in a puff of smoke in another world. He looks around and couldn't help but admire the sight. He was currently at a lake's edge turning around he saw a forest that seems to stretch for miles, and next to the forest was a green hilly area that was attached to a huge mountain, at the foot of the mountain was a huge cave. As he finished surveying the area he turned back towards the lake and sat down. Okay I'm here now what do I do? He says to himself until he hears the sound of splashing water and turns his head around, only to see a large gold yellow slitted eye that was the size of a full grown man staring at him. The eye was connected to the head of what looked like a giant serpent that had silver white skin and blackish green spots on it. It also had what appeared to be long sharp spikes on its head and probably went down its neck and back. Naruto just sat there staring at the giant eye for a few minutes and did the only thing any person would do when they saw something of that size. He screamed like a little girl and ran for his life. While he did that, a small sweat drop appeared on the Hydra's head as it watched Naruto run away waving his arms around and screaming his head off about giant snakes, trying to eat him again. Inside his mind Skekai was rolling around the ground laughing her ass off and clutching her stomach. Oh Kami this is priceless. Naruto-kun is running away from Yama-chan. She then stops and looks up at the sky. Can't blame him though, Yama-chan does have that effect on people when they see her in that form. But it was still funny. She says and continues to laugh. Naruto was currently running away until a large white and blackish green tail stopped in front of him, causing him to crash into it. Again the Hydra sweat drops, but chuckles when he falls over clutching his head. Damn that hurt. He mumbles and finds himself staring in shock as the hurt of fully rises from the water. Water glistened from its body and dripped from its black underbelly. Naruto's eyes were the size of basketballs and his jaw was on the ground as he looked at the Hydra. It has eight heads and eight tails. One of the heads moved down to Naruto and looks at him for a while. Why hello little ninja. What are you doing in my realm? The feminine voice asked while Naruto just sputter and points at her. Said Hydra sighs at this. Why is it that people always act like this whenever I'm in this form? She thought and then decides to show her true form. She glows white and starts to transform. As she shrunk her heads melded together and became one head while her tails resided into her body and she became smaller and more human shaped. When the transformation started to end, there was a flash of bright light which temporarily blinded Naruto. When his eyesight returned to him, he was met with the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his life. She had silky smooth black hair that stopped to her mid-back and it had silver highlights in it. Her skin was creamy white and smooth and it seemed to shine from the sunlight. 
She had beautiful gold yellow slitted eyes and fangs jutted from her upper lip. She wore a black kimono that had white dragons on it, and the outfit seemed to hug her herdless figure and assets that weren't too big or too small. She also had a slit on the right side of her kimono and showed off her long, sexy, flawless legs. Naruto couldn't help but blush at her appearance. A sly grin appeared on her face, and she leans over to give him a better view of her cleavage. Like what you see. Yamada asks while he does the next thing that came to his mind. He fainted. Again. Naruto slowly opened his eyes and finds himself sleeping under a tree with his body resting on it. He groans and slowly gets up. Man I had the weirdest dream. I was face to face with an eight-headed, eight-tailed hydra that was the size of the Hokage Tower, and it then transformed into a beautiful woman. He mutters but then hears a soft and angelic voice speak up. So I'm just a dream you thought of. That really hurts my feelings. He looks around the area and doesn't see anybody, but then he looks up to see the same woman from last time sitting on a tree looking down at him with a hurt look on her face. Naruto looks at her, and his eyes become bug-eyed. Oh Kami you are real. He says out loud getting a grin from her. Of course I am you silly ninja. This is my human form after all. She then leaps off the tree and lands on the ground softly. She walks up to the blonde and looks down at him. I am the Yamada no Orochi, but call me Shiroi Akihei, White Hydra. Shiroi asks in a calm tone while Naruto nods. Okay. So you're not the boss Amon for a guy named Orochimaru? Naruto asks while Shiroi blinks in confusion and then shakes her head. No I've never heard of him why? She asks. Because he's a senin for the snakes. He answered, but the shivered when he saw the dark look in her eyes. Light green chakra swirled around her, and she let out a hiss. I see. So that traitorous bastard Manda has a summoner? I should have killed that power-hungry fool when I had the chance a long time ago. He had the nerve and audacity to try and overthrow me. The Yamada no Arachi she hissed out and cracked her knuckles. I swear I'll kill that legless where a man feed his remains to the crocodiles. Anyway I'm sorry for scaring you. She paused for a moment until Naruto rubbed the back of his head nervously and spoke up. Sorry Shiroi-chan, I'm Naruto Namaka's Senju. He said but didn't notice the small blush appear on her face. Naruto, I know you signed the contract for my clan, but I must ask you this. What would you do with me as your boss summon, and why should I even let you summon my kin? Shiroi asked in a serious tone. Naruto looks at her with an expression that represented a strong will and determination. Shiroi-chan I give you not only my word, but I swear on my clan's honor and title that I'll never abuse the power of you and your kin. I will treat you like I treat my comrades and not as tools, and I wish to fight by your side as an ally. He said while well, Shiroi looks at him for a while and then smiles. Your eyes hold no lies or ill intentions. Very well Naruto Namaka send you. I Shiroi Akihei, the Yamato no Orochi and leader of the reptile clan, grant you the right to summon me and my kin. Now hold out your right arm. She orders and he does. Her fangs extend and she clamps them down on Naruto's wrist. Zed Blonde winces in pain while he felt a burning sensation go through his wrist and forearm. The pain dies down and she lets go of his arm. Naruto looks at his right arm and sees the tattoo of an eight-headed hydra wrapped around his arm. He looks at Shiroi for a while, then bows to her getting a look of surprise from the hydra. Thank you Shiroi-chan for giving me the honor to summon your kin. He says and she smiles. You're welcome young Namikas. The last couple of people who tried to force me under their command were crushed, poisoned, melted by my acid, or eaten though I had to cut back on eating ninjin because they give me heartburn. She said while Naruto chuckles nervously. Remind me to never piss you off Shiroi-chan. He replies while she laughs lightly and does a dismissive wave. Don't worry. Also to summon me you must wipe your blood on top of the tattoo. There are also other members of my clan. They are the sea serpents, the crocodiles, hydras, and komodo dragons. She explains and he nods. I also have a gift for you. She says and walks over to the lake and stretches her hand out. Ripples appear around the water and with a splash, a katana with a deep blue hilt, white diamond-shaped patterns that has a white diamond on the end of it. The guard was black and carved in the form of a hydra coiling around the blade. It was in a black and red sheath that had a white dragon wrapped around it with its maw opened. She grabbed the sword and walked over to Naruto. She then held it out with both of her hands in front of the blonde who looked at it for a while and at her. She nods for him to take it and he does. When he unsheathes it, he gasps at the blade's beauty. It was a silver blade and there seemed to be no scratches or any sign of markings on it. He could also see his reflection off the blade, and the sun's rays shining on it only made it more dazzling the sword is beautiful. He says and Shiroi nods while smiling. Thank you Naruto-kun. This sword is called Shinkan no Akuhei, Fang of the Hydra. I had it forged from my fangs and scales and forged in the white flames of a dragon and cooled in Susanoo's lake. Try channeling your chakra affinity into the sword. She says and he nods. He channels his lightning affinity into the blade and suddenly lightning runs up the blade and the blonde's eyes widen in shock and awe. 
Wow so I can channel my chakra and elemental affinity through the blade. This is awesome. He then stops channeling chakra into the sword, sheathes it, and then hugs Shiroi, whose eyes widen in surprise but returns it, and they then let go of each other. So how do I leave this place Shiroi-chan? Naruto asks. Just imagine yourself back at your previous location. She replied. Naruto pictures the forest of Konoha and Mei, and he disappears in a puff of smoke. Konoha Forest. Mei was sitting in the same spot where Naruto disappeared from, but then she jumps up on her feet when a puff of smoke appears, and when it clears, Naruto is seen with a sheathed katana in his left hand. He then finds himself being blomped by Mei and his head buried into her cleavage. Naruto kun your back. I thought Yamada no Orochi killed you. She cried out while the blonde let out an MMPH. After freeing himself she lets him go and he smiles at her. Now Naruto, you said you needed to get your original strength back right? She asks and he nods. Yeah when I was 7 I had an accident where I was working on a seal that let Kaiyu-chan come in and out of the seal without killing me. I wrote the wrong sealing symbol on my father's jutsu and it resulted in my chakra and Kaiyu's to go haywire. I came so close to dying that day, but luckily Saruoji was there and placed chakra compression seals all over my body. He said getting a look of horror from her face while he continued. He had to call in my Kaiofu, Jiraiya the Gamma Senin to repair my seal. While that happened, Kaiuchan had to separate half of my soul in order for me to recover and also turned me into a Hanyu that day, he saw Mei was about to speak up and he just chuckles. No I didn't gain fox ears or a tail. I gained those when I turn 18. I did gain claws, fangs, and other abilities I don't feel like explaining out in the open. If that incident hadn't happened, I would be at least as strong as an Anbu, but now I'm only on par with a high Chuanin level Nin, so I need to gain it back as soon as possible. He finished explaining and she nods. So what affinities do you have? Mei asked while Naruto pulled out a piece of white paper and focused his chakra into it. First it split it in half, then it got soaked up on one side, wrinkled up in the other, and burned and turned to dust on the other sides. Mei's eyes widened in shock as she saw that he had an affinity for all five main elements. Being the container for the most powerful Bijuu in the elementals and a Hanyu does have its advantages. I gained wind from my father, water and lightning from my mother, and fire from Kaiyu, since it's her major affinity. I gained earth from one of her tails, but also gained a few sub-elemental affinities. He pulls out another chakra paper focuses even harder on it. The plant grows out of one side, and the other side is Molten Maze looks at the paper, and her eyes were bigger than dinner plates. Why you have the same sub-element like I do? And you also have Mokuten. She then squeals out loud and pulls him into a hug, then nuzzles his cheek. My future husband is so amazing. She then lets go of him, and he then destroys the two papers. The last thing I need is for those bastards in the council knowing this. So Mei-chan after we finish training do you want to go to the hot springs? He asks his future wife, getting a smile from the young cage. I'd love to. We can go in the co-ed side and wash each other's backs Naruto-kun. She says in a seductive tone while Naruto rubs the back of his head blushing. Sure I'll wash your back Mei-chan. He replies and the both start to laugh. That's when Naruto spoke up. You have a beautiful laugh Mei-chan. This causes a blush to appear on her face. Thank you. Anyway let's get started on your training. For the next couple of hours, Naruto worked in his chakra exercises, as well as did push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups and his mother's kenjutsu and tojutsu styles, the height Mitsurugi Ryu, flying heavenly sword, and Shinku Ryu Ken, crimson dragon fist. After spending the next five hours training his ass off, they headed for the hot springs. After signing in, Mayor reserved the co-ed side for her and Naruto only. Said blonde was relaxing his body into the warm soothing water with his eyes closed. Sleeping on top of his head curled up into a ball was a red fur-covered fox with two tails. It was Kai. Said fox's ears shot up and opened one of her pink-colored eyes. She saw Mei walking towards the hot spring with her hair down and a towel wrapped around her body. A grin appears on her face, and she jumps off of Naruto's head and into the hot spring, swimming away from him and later leaps on a warm rock, shakes the water off and falls back asleep. Naruto feels two arms wrap around his neck and a chest pressed up against his back. He turns his head to see Mei smiling at him, and she kisses him lightly on the lips. Said blonde returns it and gets a good look at her body. The towel hugged her flawless body like a second skin and showed off every single curve her body had. Naruto wraps one arm around her waist and pulls her onto his lap, getting an eep and a look of surprise from Mei. Naruto smirks at her and pulls her body close to his. Are you comfy Mei-chan? He asks while she smiles and rests her head on his shoulder. Naruto inhales her scent and she smelled like exotic fruits. Mei shivers a little but lets out a sigh and closes her eyes. Well don't you two look cute together. Kaiyu says telepathically while Naruto rolls his eyes at her. Look Kaiyu I'm not ignoring you anything, but I'm trying to spend time with my fiancé. I promise I'll make it up to you when we go back to the apartment. Kaiyu looks at Naruto and grins. Fine. 
When we get back to your apartment you have to let me sleep with you in my human form. She says giggling inside her mind while Naruto blushes and glares at the grinning fox. He then gets an evil glare on his face, making Caillou who's in her fox form I twitch. If I were you Caillou I'd watch my backside when sleeping with me. I might end up doing something to it that'll make you scream my name. Ayu shivers and gives him a heated glare. Try it and I'll change your gender you perverted Hanyu. She growled while Naruto snickers at her expression, but then his eyes widen and then narrow when he hears a giggle from the distance. Mei-chan. Naruto says. The Mizuka opens her jade eyes and looks at him. Yes. There's a pervert nearby. He whispers into her ear making her eyes widen a little. Would you be so kind and send him here so that I can deal with him? She asks. Naruto nods and gently removes her from his lap then gets up, acting like he's leaving the hot spring. On the tree branch a man with long white spiky hair, wearing a green guy, a red vest, red Jetta sandals, and a headband with a kanji for oil, was peeping on Mei who got up and looked like she was about to remove her towel with a telescope. He was Jiraiya, the Gamma Senen. Right now he was giggling like a madman when he saw Mei about to remove her towel. Oh yeah I hit the jackpot with this one. My next book is gonna be a huge hit. He says as a small drop of blood falls from his nostril. Little did he know that Naruto, who was now in a pair of shorts, was behind him crouching and grinning like a Chisire cat. He puts his two hands together and extends his index and middle fingers and aimed them at Jiraiya's ass. Kanoha Tejutsu no Aogi. Senen Garashi. The yells, startling Jiraiya was too slow to react and ended up having a pair of chakra-enhanced fingers shoved in his ass, resulting in a girly scream from Jiraiya, who was clutching his butt in pain and was sent flying into the hot springs, creating a big splash, soaking Mei whose eyebrow was twitching dangerously. Steam was coming off of her skin while Jiraiya, who was rising out of the water, was growling. When I get my hands on whoever did that all he started to say until he froze up from the murderous intent he felt behind him and slowly turned his head to see an angry Mei glaring at him with her icy jade eyes. Gureya gulped and started to laugh nervously. Now Mizukij don't know I can explain. He started to say until he heard her crack her knuckles loudly and walked over to him slowly. Shut up and I'll make this as painless actually I want. She said as her shadow loomed over the now whimpering Jiraiya. Naruto was in the changing room with his clothes on and his katana strapped to his back, leaning against the wall. 3 2 1 he says to himself and suddenly the sound of girly screams and fists making contact with a body were heard all over Kanoha. Hiruzen was in his office reading his Icha Icha book while his shadow clones were doing the paperwork. He then heard a scream coming from the hot springs and sighs. When will you ever learn Jiraiya? He mumbles. Please not the face not the face. No, not there either please. Naruto winced when he heard the sound of a foot making contact with a groin. Oh Kami my manhood. The toad sage screamed out while Caillou, who walked into the room, saw Naruto and leaped on the top of his head. Shouldn't you go help your Caillou for Naruto-kun? I don't think you'll enjoy having his jewels melted off by your fiancé. Caillou asked while the blonde shrugs. Not now. Let Mei-chan beat the crap out of him for a while. He says and strokes her back with a finger, getting a purr from the fox. Ten minutes later, the beating stops and Naruto walks back into the hot spring section and sweat drops at the beaten, broken, bloody, and twitching form of Jiraiya. Mei-chan was massaging her sore knuckles and mumbled something about perverted old fools and melting off their balls with lava. Naruto chuckles at this and walks over to Mei and then places his hands around hers and they glow green. Is that better Mei-chan? Naruto asks his future bride who smiles and kisses Naruto on the lips. Yes it is. She says. They then notice Jiraiya groaning and getting up from the beating he just suffered. Oh Kami I haven't been beaten that badly since Minato caught me peeking on Kashina. He mumbled while popping his back in place. Naruto's eyes twitched dangerously when he heard that. What was that Kaiofu? Do I need to let Mei-chan here melt your balls off? He growled out only for Jiraiya to turn around and see Naruto glaring at him. Gaki. Wow what happened to you? The last time I saw you, you were a chibi version of your dad. He said with a goofy grin on his face. A small smile appears on his face. I hit a growth spurt. That and I was finally able to become whole again. He said causing Jiraiya's eyes to widen a little, but return to normal. I see he then looks at the Mizukijin back at Naruto, and a grin appears on his face. So do you mind explaining what you're doing with the Mizukijgaki? He asks and Naruto mutters about perverted godfathers being nosy. If you must know she's my fiancé. He says causing Jiraiya's jaw to drop. D did you just say that she is your fiancé? Naruto groans and nods while rubbing the back of his head. Jiraiya then finds himself bowing down before his godson chanting I am not worthy, while Mei and Kaiu sweat drop. I'm never gonna leave my children kids alone with that man. They both thought while well, Naruto sighs at how he was acting. Hiraya then places his hands on his godson's shoulders while an I'm tears fell down his face. I'm so proud of you kid. 
14 years old and you already have an older woman, a cage no less, as your future bride. He ranted on until May coughed out loud getting their attention. Please don't corrupt my future husband Jurei Asama or I'll have to kill you. She said in a sweet tone making the man shiver at the tone. D don't worry I don't plan on it. Yet. So Gaki do you need any help with your training? I already have Mei Chan helping me, but I could use your help with Fuin Jutsu and get me back to my original level of strength. Also do you think you can help me with the Rasengan? He asks and gets a nod from Jiraiya. Sure I was actually planning on teaching it to you when I came back and let you sign the Toad contract. Thanks but Mei Chan already gave me a contract for the Akuhei Hydra clan, but I could use the Toads as a support summons. He said and Jiraiya's jaw dropped again and saw the tattoo of an eight-headed eight-tailed Hydra on his right arm. Damn Gaki you're gonna be one hell of a ninja if you have that clan as your summon and sure I let you use the toads as a support summon. Naruto grins while Mei walks in to get changed. I also heard from the old man that you tangoed with a white snake in the forest of death. Are you okay? He asks in a serious yet sincere tone and Naruto nods. Yeah, despite the fact that I was eaten alive by a snake and then fought said summoner and got my chakra screwed up by a seal, the team slammed into my gut while my teammates froze up like a bunch of bitches. Other than that I'm fine. Speaking of seals, do you know the god Yufuin, five elemental seal? Iraya blinks at Naruto for a while, but nods. Yes I do why? He asks. I might need to use it in the finals because there's guy from Suna who's a container like me only his seal makes him unstable. I know he has the Ichibi no Tanuki Shikaku sealed inside him due to the fact that the demon is a sand apparition. Naruto explained and Jiraiya rubs his chin for a while and grins. I see. So are you facing him first? Jiraiya asks. No I'm facing a prick named Nichi Hayuga. Naruto answers. But I already know how to beat that idiot due to the fact that the Hayugas only use their Byakugan and Jaikan style, but Gara is gonna be tough for me, even when I gain my strength back. He can manipulate sand to the point where it protects him and attacks his opponents. He also has a final defense called Suna no Yoroi, sand armor, and it is stronger than steel. But it's also his weakness. In order for him to keep his armor strong, he needs chakra. His Tejutsu is non-existent and I doubt that he knows Jinjutsu. Naruto explains while Jiraiya smirks. Great. So we have two months to get you ready to face the Hayuga kid and the Tanuki, raccoon dog kid. But let me ask this first Gaki. What did your sensei Kakashi teach you because the old monkey just glared at me and told me to ask you. Jiraiya replied only for Naruto to frown and narrow his eyes. Aside from tree walking. Nothing. He was too busy being Sasuke's bitch to teach me or that pink haired brat anything. He also said I wasn't worth his time and didn't have what it takes to be a shinobi and that our leader only made me one out of pity. He answered and sees Jiraiya growl and release a small amount of Kai around the area, but then stopped and an evil grin appeared on his face. Don't sweat it Naruto. After the exams are over, I'll take you on as my apprentice like I did your old man, even if you don't make Chunin this time. Also how far can you go when using the Horatian no Jutsu? The Toad Sage asks causing Mei's eyes widen in shock and awe. Why you know the Horatian too? She asks and Naruto nods. Yes I do but not to my dad's level. The farthest I can go is 50 miles per hour. And I can only use 4 kunai at a time. Last time I tried to use more than 4 I almost threw up my stomach. He mumbles while Caillou who was in fox form snickers. Dureya's jaw dropped at this but then a huge grin appears on his face. Man Gaki you are full of surprises. I knew sensei was helping you with your skills when you were younger but damn. Well, I should get going, you and your fiancé meet me at training ground 26. It's the one with the huge waterfall in Lake Jana. He says and disappears in a puff of smoke. Mei then walks over to Naruto and smiles. I have to go to Naruto or else my bodyguards will get worried. I'll be at the Golden Leaf Hotel. She replies, getting a nod from Naruto. Mei then wraps her arms around his neck and kisses him fully on the lips for a few minutes and then ends it with Naruto just staring at her. She giggles and disappears in a swirl of water. Kaiu leaps off Naruto's head and morphs into her human form, wearing a black shirt and red pants, and started to stare at a dazed Naruto and sighs. She then grabs his cheeks and stretches them out until Naruto cries out in pain. Aitai. Kaiu what's wrong with you? He cried out, rubbing his sore cheeks while she glares at him and huffs, crossing her arms against her chest. You were in a dazed baka. Anyways it's getting dark, I'm hungry and tired, and you promised to sleep with me while I'm in my human form. She said with a cheeky grin on her face while Naruto groaned. Find Kaiu chan but don't try anything funny. He said in a playful tone while her grin grew. And if I do? She asks but eeps when he pulls her against his body. I'll give you a reason to watch your backside you sly vixen. He growled in her ear and squeezed her ass. She squeaks and frees herself from his grip glaring at the grinning blonde. Keep your hands off my ass or I'll make you regret it, you pervert. 
She growled, showing off her canines, but Naruto just smirks at her. I'll try Kaiyu-chan, but you know how my hands wander while I'm sleeping. He says making her twitch. He then walks over to her and again wraps his arms around her and kisses her on the lips for a while. She then looks at him and smiles a little. Can I at least cope a feel Kaiyu-chan? I know you like it when I massage your cheeks. He says in a husky tone causing her to grumble, but gives in. Fine but I want to give you something in return. She says and he blinks for a while until she leans into his ear and whispers something into his ear. Naruto's eyes widen and a tint of pink appears on his face while she giggles and licks her lips. She sees the look of shock on his face and she grabs his hand and shunchions them to his mother's apartment. Midnight, Naruto's bedroom, Naruto and Kaiyu were engaging into a tongue battle while in their underwear on the bed. Naruto was wearing a pair of black boxers while Kaiyu was wearing a red bra and panties and was on top of him. After five minutes of tongue wrestling they stop for air, panting heavily. Kaiyu grins evilly at the blonde whose eyes widen but return to normal. So are you ready to do that to me Kaiyu-chan? He asks while she nods and giggles pervertedly as she watches the tent in his boxers grows. Oh I'm gonna enjoy this Naruto-kun. She says and grinds her waist against his friend, getting a groan from Naruto. Not as much as I am you horny vixen. He says while her grin became bigger. After doing that he pulls her panties back on her, his anatomy in his boxers, and wraps his hands around her waist and kisses her neck. Naruto you jerk. You better be lucky I'm your mate or I'd be castrating you. She mumbles and turns around to sit on his lap. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle and starts to kiss her jawline and neck. They lay back on the bed with Naruto on top of her, still kissing her neck. He then moves down to her stomach and starts to kiss and lick her navel making her giggle. Naruto does that for a while, then make his way back to kissing her lips. After all that they snuggle against each other with Kaiyu purring on the crook of his neck while Naruto rubs her bare back. Good night Narukan she mumbles and goes back to sleep. Good night Kaiyu Haim. He says and rests his chin on top of her head. For the last two months Naruto spent his time training with his Kaiofu, Godfather, and Finnis. Jiraiya helped him with Fuinjutsu and also taught Naruto some of his personal ones like the Hari Jizo, Needle Guardian, and Yomi Numa, Swamp of the Underworld. He also helped Naruto with the Rasengan and to his shock, Naruto managed to master it in a week. Mei also helped him with his Yoten element and taught him a few Suiden Jutsu. For the rest of the second month, Naruto worked on his mother's Kenjutsu and Tejutsu style. Two months later, Chunin Exam Stadium, in the cage booth, the Hokage and Kazakiage, Orochimaru in disguise, were sitting and waiting for crowd to settle down. The genin that didn't make it to the finals were sitting with the crowd. I wonder where Sasuke-kun and Naruto are. They're not here with the other finalists. Ino replies while Sakura scoffs. Who cares about that blonde baka? He's nothing compared to Sasuke-kun and Niji, and their geniuses. She said not caring if the Hayuga killed Naruto or not in the finals. Ino looks at Sakura in shock. Sakura he's your teammate. I know he's not as smart as Sasuke-kun, but have some faith in him. Ino said and Choji nods while eating a bag of chips. Shikamaru looks around and frowns when he doesn't Naruto or Sasuke. Troublesome those two are missing, and so is that Doku guy. Stop looking around kid and face the audience, in this main tournament, you guys are the stars. Said a senbin chewing Jown and named Genma. At the Hokage booth, a Jounin appears next to Suratobi and whispers into his ear. Hokage Sama Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Chiha still haven't showed up yet. What do we do? He asks. Then Saratobi looked out of the corner of his eye to see Mei and two of her bodyguards coming up. Don't worry, I am sure that Naruto Uzumaki is fine, but keep a lookout for Sasuke Chiha. He says getting a nod from the Jounin who shunshins away. Mei sits down next to the Hokage with her guards flanking her. Hello, Mizukage Dono, I trust that the long journey was not too long. He asks with a smile and she smirked. Not at all, Hokage Dono. Hello, Kazakiage Dono. The Kazakiage nodded his head in respect to her, but inside, Orochimaru was panicking about her presence. Curses. Another cage is here. I might have to cancel the invasion. I can't take on both Suratobi and the Mizukage. He thought in his mind. Suratobi turns his head to Mei and whispers. Mei-san, do you know where Naruto is? She smiles at him and says. Don't worry. He's just preparing for a flashy entrance. Suratobi chuckles at a response. Just like his father. Now then, he then stands up while the crowd gets quiet. Thank you, everyone for coming to Kanoha's Chunin exams. We will now start the main tournament matches between the eight participants who made it through the preliminaries. Please stay and watch until the end. The Kazakiage then spoke up as Hiruzen started to sit down if it's eight, then two appear to be missing. Tsuritobi said nothing and while that happened, Genma pulled out a piece of paper, there's something I would like to tell you before the matches, look at this. Everyone peered at the matches to see that it was even. There are some minor changes to the tournament, so check again who you are fighting. Shikamaru thought, I had an extra match, did that Dosu guy forfeit? 
Gara's hand began to twitch as he waited and said, okay, this is the finals the secrecy is different, but the same rules from the prelims still apply, got it. Now will Naruto Uzumaki and Niji Hayuga step forward. Niji stepped forward with a smug look on his face, and suddenly a swirl of water, wind, and ice dance around the arena, shocking everyone but Mei who was smiling under her hat. After that, a hooded figure wearing a dark blue cloak appeared in the middle of the whirlwind, and then it died down. Genma looks at the figure who grabs the cloak and flings it off shocking everyone in the stadium. It was Naruto Uzumaki, but what shocked everyone was his appearance. He was now 5'6 wearing a dark blue long sleeve jacket with pockets on it and a silver line going down the sleeves. He also wore black Anbu-styled pants with a silver line going down the middle and Anbu-styled sandals that stopped below his knees. He also wore a black muscle shirt that hugged his body and wore it like a second skin and it showed off his chest and abs. On the back of his jacket was the picture of the Kaiubi in a crouching position, as well as the five elemental kanji for water, wind, lightning, fire, and earth. He also had black fingerless gloves on, and they had metal plates on them. He also had crimson highlights in his bangs. Strapped to his back was a sword with a red hilt, gold guard, and a black sheath. It was Naruto's mother's sword the dragon sword, and on his right hip, he had another katana strapped. It had a deep blue hilt, white diamond-shaped patterns that has a white diamond on the end of it, the guard was black and carved in the form of a hydra coiling around the blade. It was in a black and red sheath that had a white dragon wrapped around it with its maw opened. It was the Shinkan Akuhe. Around his neck was what looked like a Magatama jewel that was attached to a necklace, Eye of the Dragon from Ninja Gaiden. Oh my god that's Naruto Ino shouted out, while Sakura couldn't believe that this was Naruto and thought that it had to be a trick. Saratobi chuckles at this. Most of the girls, both civilian and Kinoichi, were blushing at the new and improved blonde genin. Benton's cheeks were red, and she couldn't help but admire his swords. Tamari was also blushing and couldn't help but look at his chest and abs. Whoa, he went from shrimpy to hottie in less than two months. I wonder if I can get him on a date after this. She said to herself while her cheeks burned red. Shikamaru's eyes were white as well, but he chuckles and mutters troublesome blondes. Gara looks at him too but had a feeling that this blonde kid from the exams was dangerous and smiles darkly. Perhaps you'll be the one I prove my existence to Yuzumaki. He thought but was wondering why Shukao was quiet. Naruto looks at Genma and grins. Am I late Proctor-san? Naruto asks while well, the Jounin chuckles and shakes his head. No. Actually you're just in time for your match against Niji Hayuga. He says while the blonde nods. Good. So can we get started. I have a Chunin flak jacket with my name on it and a prick's ass to kick. He says ignoring the glare Niji was giving him. Genma nods and looks at the other Genin. The rest of you go to the stadium and wait for your match. He said as they walked away. One moment Proctor. Oi. Tamari-san. He yells out, getting her attention. He then removes his swords from his back and right hip and holds them out to her. Would you mind holding these for me? He asks getting a nod from her, and he hands them to her. Thank you beautiful. He replies, making her blush. She then walks over to the stairs quickly while Naruto chuckles. I'm definitely going on a date with her. He says to himself but then looks back at Niji. In the stadium Izumo and Katetsu look at the blonde. This ought to be good. I wonder how strong the kid got in two months. Izumo wondered while Kitetsu smiles. Who knows? But the question is can he beat Niji Hayuga who's considered a prodigy in the Hayuga clan? Kitetsu replies. This should be good. Kiba says while Hinata clutches her chest. Naruto-kun. She says quietly. So the Baka changed his clothes. So what? He's still gonna lose. Sakura says and Ino glares at her former friend. Some teammate you are Sakura. Naruto may be the dead last, but at least he's in the final so shut up. Ino replies while well, the pink-haired girl looks at Ino in shock, but then turns away from her. Hiyashi and his daughter, Hanabi were also watching the fight. Watch closely Hanabi, there isn't another Hayuga whose blood is stronger than Niji's. He says getting a nod from his daughter. Meanwhile as Genma moved back so he didn't get caught in the crossfire. Niji decides to speak up with an arrogant tone. So you've changed your wardrobe, facial appearance, and you now have two swords that I doubt you could use. That won't save you though because fate has declared me the victor of the tournament. He says waiting for the blonde to lash out at him. Naruto just stands there with his hands in his pockets and just glares at the Hayuga. He then removes his hands from his pockets and tilts his neck a few times, getting a few crack noises out. He then breathes in and out and looks at Niji like he's a short-minded fool. Niji raises an eyebrow at Naruto. I suggest you get ready to admit defeat Yuzumaki. I have fate on my side and no one can defy fate. He says. Naruto then decides to speak up. Niji do me a favor and shut the fuck up. He said getting a gasp from everyone while Niji twitches. There is no such thing as fate. It's only an illusion that weak, ignorant, and pompous fools like you use because you don't have the strength or the balls to defy it. 
he said while Niji growls at the blonde and gets into a Jukin stance. I'd pick my next words carefully you fool. They may be your last. He says and activates his Byakugan. Naruto smirks at the Hyuga prodigy and speaks up. Oh shut up pale eyes and get ready to have your ass kicked. He says and leaps back performing a few hand seals. Kurigakur no jutsu. He says and suddenly, a white mist appears around the stadium, making Naruto's image vanish in the mist, while Niji frowns and looks around. So you know a jutsu. Big deal it won't save you from my eyes. He says but hears no response from the blonde. The mist gets thicker, and Niji gets frustrated because his eyes can't seem to trace Naruto. What's the matter dead last? Can't face me like a true shinobi. He taunts but his eyes widen, and he ducks as a barrage of shuriken move past his head. He gets up and looks around for Naruto. Come out and face your fate loser. He yells while Naruto who was in the mist grins and moves his right arm forward, pointing his index and middle finger at the Hyuga. Raiden. By Akurai he says while his fingers glow and a small orb appears with static electricity. When that happens, a beam of white lightning shoots towards Niji's back. The Hyuga senses something behind him and that was a bolt of lightning coming straight at him. He manages to dodge it, but his cheek gets grazed by it, making the Hyuga wince from the pain. Damn it. If that attack had hit me it would have he started to think only for Naruto to appear on his right with his fist cocked back and swings at Niji. He ducks and gets ready to perform a palm strike to the blonde's chest, only for Naruto to sidestep and grab the Hyuga's wrist. He twists it slightly and delivers a chakra-enhanced kick to his chest, sending the Hyuga flying through the mist. Niji manages to flip in mid-air and lands on the ground, skidding back a couple of feet and coughs a few times. Lucky shot. He mutters. I heard that girly boy. Naruto says in the mist. The mist suddenly clears, and Naruto is seen twirling a few shuriken in his hands at a slow pace. Niji just frowns and charges. Naruto smirks at the prick and twirls the windmill even faster until it's a spinning buzz saw he then tosses it at Niji full force, the Hyuga leaps over it and lands on the ground again and charges at Naruto full speed. Naruto's eyes widen and before he could do anything, Niji strikes him in the chest with a palm strice and he gasps out, shocking everyone. Ha. Huh. Told you he'd lose. Sakura says. Niji smirks at the shock expression on Naruto's face, but his smirk becomes a frown when Naruto says one word. Fool. He then bursts into water, surprising and shocking Niji. What? A Mizubunshin, water clone, when did he he cries out, but then the windmill shuriken turned into a puff of smoke, revealing Naruto in the air with another spinning windmill in his hands. Hey Niji. Naruto yells out, and the prick turns around to see Naruto with another windmill shuriken in his hands. Said blonde then throws it and performs a few seals. Cage Fuma Shuriken no Jutsu. He cries out, and the one Fuma Shuriken becomes 20, but Naruto isn't finished there. Fuitan. S-E-N-P-U-K-E and -E wind, release. Hurricane fist he says and Naruto punches his fist out and releases a gust of wind that increases the speed of the shurikens that were going for a shock Niji. Whoa. He knows a wind Jutsu now I really want that date with him. She says to herself and hugs his swords to her boy. Tenten was glaring at the Suna Kanoichi because she wanted to hold those swords. The other genin's eyes widen at what Naruto just did Kiba then shouts out. Yeah Naruto. Niji curses and his body glows for a while. He then spins really fast, creating a spinning chakra shield Katen. Heavenly rotation. He cries out and the shuriken are deflected. He ashi had a look of surprise and awe as did Hanabi. T2 sent that was. I know. Such skill is wasted on the branch family. He says in a low tone. Naruto lands on the ground as the Katen dies down. Niji then stops spinning and smirks at Naruto. You should be honored. It's not every day that I use my trump card on a mere commoner. He replies. Well Naruto just looks at him and scratches his head. That was your trump card. Pretty lame if you ask me. He said getting a face fault and sweat drop from most of the ninja and civilians. He ashy growls at the blonde for insulting his clan's most powerful technique, wow is this dude delusional or what? Saratobi couldn't help but chuckle. Leave it to Naruto to insult a clan like the Hyugas. Asuma and Kurinai hear this also, and Asuma smirks at the blonde's actions. That kid must have balls of steel to insult one of the strongest clans in Konoha. He says and Kurinai nods with him. Niji now was fuming. How dare this nobody insult my technique. He'll pay. Niji once again gets into the Jukin stance. I'm done holding back Yuzumaki. Now I'll show you the true power of the Hyuga clan. He says while Naruto looks at the ninja and mock shock. You were holding back wow, and here I thought you were a spoiled brat with a stick up your ass. He said while Niji growls. Shut up you peasant. He yells and charges at Naruto. Naruto's expression hardens and he gets into a fighting stance with his legs slightly spread apart, his right arm cocked back into a fist and his left arm out with the palm opened. But Niji is a few feet near him, Naruto swings his right arm at Niji who dodges to the left and performs a sweep kick at his legs. 
Naruto leaps over the move and lands on the other side. He then dodges two of Niji's palm strikes and performs a roundhouse kick at Niji who blocks it with his arms, but Naruto adds more force to the attack, breaking Niji's defense. Seeing this Naruto spins and knees Niji in the gut, making the Hayuga gasp out as Naruto performs another knee strike, then grabs Niji by his jacket, flips him over, and slams him onto the ground hard. The Hayuga winces in pain, but then his eyes widen when he sees Naruto lift his right leg up into the air and brings it down fast and hard. He barely manages to roll out of the way as Naruto's foot comes down and makes an impact with the ground. After rolling out the way Niji watches as Naruto removes his foot from the small crater his foot made and just stares at Niji. He then pulls one kunai from each hand at throws them at Niji who pulls out one and deflects them. Two shadow clones flank Niji's side with a kadachi in their hand and swing at Niji's sides. The Hayuga jumps into the air and another clone appears performing a drop kick. Niji manages to tilt his body back as the clone passes him and he lands on the ground only to get an uppercut to the jaw by the real Naruto who leaps into the air grabs Niji by the collar of his jacket and arm. As they went down, Naruto slams Niji into the ground while said Hayuga coughs up a little blood. Naruto's not finished and he picks the Hayuga up and punches him hard in the stomach three times, knees him into gut, cocks his fist back and socks him hard into the jaw, sending the Hayuga sprawling to the ground, skidding backwards and stops a few feet from Naruto. Before Niji could do anything, his ankle was grabbed by Naruto and he was lifted off the ground only to get slammed on his back on the opposite side. Naruto does three times and then spins around fast with Niji spinning also. He then flings Niji into the wall and hits it hard, leaving an imprint of his body onto the wall while he slides down. Naruto then vanishes and appears before Niji and grabs him by the collar of his jacket and flings him back into the middle of the field. Naruto then slowly walks towards the Hayuga who was struggling to get back on his feet. That when Naruto once again grabbed him by the collar again and pulled him to his eye level. So are you gonna apologize to Hinata or do I still have to make an example out of you? He asks and Niji spits blood and saliva on Naruto's face shocking everyone. Naruto on the other hand rears his left fist back and socks him across the jaw hard and proceeds to unleash a barrage of punches on Niji's face, making the boys jerk back. To say everyone was shocked would be an understatement. Niji Hayuga, last year's rookie of the year and member of the Hayuga clan, was getting his ass handed to him by Naruto Uzumaki, the dead last. Man, he's beating the crap out of that Niji kid. Hopefully the blonde doesn't kill the kid with those punches. Genma mutters and his face twitched a little when he saw a couple of teeth fly out Niji's mouth. Chaoji dropped his bag of chips and couldn't help but keep looking at the beating Naruto was giving to Niji. Remind me to never piss Naruto off. He says to Ino who just nods without looking at him. Naruto however continues with the assault but the pauses when he sees Niji's bloody face. He then performs an uppercut that send the prodigy flying upwards in midair. After that, Naruto runs towards one of the walls and runs up it. He then adds chakra to his leg and uses it to launch himself off the wall at high speed towards Niji and kicks him back into the same spot, making the crater bigger, and once again he slides down the wall. Niji wobbly get up, but the feels a fist buried into his stomach and hunches over in pain, coughing out saliva. Naruto then grabs Niji by his hair and drags him across the field and onto the middle of the arena and drops him. He then stomps on the Hayuga's hand, breaking the knuckles and a few bones. Niji screams out in pain, while Naruto releases his foot from the Hayuga's now broken hand. Niji rolls away clutching his now broken hand. While Naruto just glares at the boy. Pathetic. I expected you to be stronger than this. Boy was I stupid in getting worked up with kicking your ass. So much for the Hayuga clan being the strongest clan in Konoha if their prodigy is this weak and pathetic. But do you know the most embarrassing part? You got the shit beat out of you by the dead last. Ironic isn't it? Your clan always preaches about how their bloodline makes them invincible. Such foolishness and arrogance is not needed in our ranks. Do you honestly think that your all-seeing eye and Juken style is enough to beat your opponent? Please, I can think of 20 different ways to beat you and your bloodline without breaking a sweat. He says in a cold tone. The Ashi clenches his fist at the boy. Niji gets up and glares at Naruto. Don't get up Niji, you can't fight me anymore, now that your hand is broken, unless you know one-handed seals which I doubt, since you probably didn't even bother to learn more than your clan techniques. Am I right or what? He asks only to get silence, and he chuckles. Ami you bloodline users are stupid. What would have happened if you faced an enemy who knew how to fight your Byakugan and the Juken? You would have had to retreat or you would have died and had your eyes and balls taken to be examined and probably produce a new clan of Hyugas who aren't in Konoha. He replied, shut up. Who are you to tell me to expand my horizon? I am a Hayuga and there's no one else in this village or any other that is stronger than you POW. Niji got punched right in the face by Naruto. The sound of cartilage breaking is heard and he tumbles away. 
He stops and clutches his face in pain and lets out a muffled scream. Shut the fuck up you piece of shit. You have no room to talk about whose clan is stronger because if your clan was so fucking strong, then why haven't any of them become Hokage yet? He yelled out. Asuma had to bite down on his lip to hold in a laugh. I take what I said back. His balls must be made of brass and steel. A clan who enslaves their own family and treats them like pets is not a clan. Even the Achiha clan didn't have slaves which is very shocking to me. So tell me Niji. What's it like to kiss the ass of a bunch of old farts who can't even shit right without assistance? He asks while Niji gets up, holding his nose, but by the scrunching of his face, he was pissed. Siratobi lets out a cough to prevent himself from laughing. May looks at him and smiles is everything alright Siratobi-san? She asks while he nods. Yes I am just a little fit. The K's cage chuckles at what he was hearing. Your genin skills are impressive Siratobi-san. I thought he was the dead last of the academy. Siratobi snorts. Deception is a shinobi's most deadliest weapon Kazuki Ajsama. He nods and looks back at the fight. Naruto then spits on the ground and looks back at the pissed off Hayuga. What's wrong Niji? Are you pissed because I insulted your clan? Or is it because you are the pet who can't do nothing more but respond to your master's call like a dog? He says and senses the Kai coming from the boy. Proctor, call the match, he can't fight me with a broken hand or cast jutsu. If not I'll do more than break his hand and nose. He says and cracks his knuckles. Genma moves between them. The winner is Naruto Uzumaki. He says while the crowd cheers, but as soon as Naruto walks away he hears a roar filled with hate and rage and turns his head to see a pissed off Niji charging at him. I'll kill you. Niji screamed out with his Byakugan springing to life. Gemna tried to stop him, but the Hayuga was too quick. Naruto vanishes and kicks the enraged Hayuga in the side of the head so hard that he is sent into a tree and collapses into unconsciousness. When the proctor announces the winner Hayuga you limp away to the medical ward, not attack the victor. He says and vanishes into a swirl of leaves and to the other genin who were in the finals. Naruto walks towards a blushing Tamari and stops in front of her. May I have my swords back Tamari-chan? He asks while grinning at her. She nods with a blush on her face and hands them back to him. Thank you and I wish you luck in your match. He says as he straps his words back on. The H thank you Naruto ku I mean san. She said as her blush increases. Naruto just chuckles and walks away from her and back to the other gen and grinning. Hey Shika, Shino, how's it going? He asks and the Nara decides to speak up. Okay Naruto I know you probably have the answer, but what the hell happened to you? He asks and Shino nods. Yes Yuzumaki sen I too am curious about your new appearance and skills. The Aburam asks. Naruto smirks and replies. Come on now Shika I know you're lazy but not stupid and Shino isn't deception all part of the shinobi way. Naruto asks and Shino raised both eyebrows. I understand now. I apologize if I insulted you in any way Yuzumaki-san. He says and Naruto rolls his eyes. Shino you don't have to call me Yuzumaki-san. I prefer Naruto. He says while the bug user nods. Very well. He says while Shika chuckles. Man Naruto, you are so troublesome. He says while the blonde grins. Oh shut up lazy ass. You think everything is troublesome. No wonder all the females in your clan kick your asses. He said while Shikamaru twitches. Speaking of females, when do you plan on asking out Eno? He asks out loud getting a blush from Eno and from the shadow user. Don't worry dude I'm not going to steal her from you. I'm more interested into Tamari. He says while the wind user looks at him, turns red and sputters while he winks at her. May hears this and a smirk appears on her face. It appears Nerukan has already found another female to join his harem. She's not bad looking, but if anyone is bearing his first child, it's me, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. She thought while well, Naruto, Kaiu, Tenten, Tamari, and Anko sneeze. Someone's talking about me. Probably Mei-chan thinking about our honeymoon. He says to himself. Meanwhile in the cage booth Raidu appears near Suratobi. Hokage-sama, Sasuke Chiha still hasn't showed up for his match. What should we do? He asks. Saratobi sighs in frustration. Tell Genma the Sasuke Chiha is disqualified. He says and the Kazuki spoke why not postpone the match. Everyone including the lords from the other nations came to see the Achiha fight. Raidu looks up at the Kazuki excuse me, but someone who doesn't show up on time doesn't have the right to be a Chunin. Clan members are not an exception. He says while May is right. I agree. If this was a war and the Achiha's team was late due to his ignorance, then it'll cost not just the current team, but the entire village. Ninja who don't follow the rules have no right to be ninja. She says and Saratobi agrees. They're right Kazuki Ajdono. I can't show favoritism to anyone that will be disqualified and that is my final answer. He says while Raidu shunshins away to inform Genma. Damn that woman. The invasion has been compromised. I have no choice but to call it off. 
The Kazakiyaj made a hand sign to call off the attack, and Kabuto saw it and just stood there, observing the match. After Genma got the message he announced this. Due to him not being on time, Ichiha Sasuke has been disqualified from the match, making Gara the winner by default. He replied while the crowd booed at the decision. What? That's not fair. Sakura screamed out while Ino, who covered her ears, smacked the girl upside the head. Shut up Sakura. Ino yelled. Naruto smirks at this. So much for the almighty Ichiha clan. He says and Shikamaru mutters troublesome again. Skipping the other matches. After Shikamaru gave up his fight, he walked back up to the arena, glaring at a grinning Naruto. If you ever do pull something like that again Naruto I'll kill you. He said in a dark tone while the blonde shrugs. Not my fault you're lazy. He says and then appears next to Tamari who eeps. Naruto chuckles and puts an arm around the blonde Kinoichi, who blushes when she felt the muscles in his arms. Great match Tamari-chan. Too bad you didn't clock Shika in the head with your fan. Well it's time for my match. He says but then whispers into her ear. I'll help your brother defeat his inner demon. He says and her eye widened, but before she could say anything he vanished in a swirl of water and ends up in the arena with his arms crossed. Ara does the same with his sand and appears a few feet away from Naruto and smiles a smile filled with bloodlust. I see you've gotten stronger Yuzumaki. Perhaps your blood will satisfy my mother. He says in a monotone voice while Naruto smirks. Sorry Tanuki, but your mother won't be tasting my blood today. Plus the only one who gets to taste any part of me is my water goddess. He says with a smile on his face. Mei hears this and blushes when Naruto calls her that. Genom was about to start the match until they were interrupted by swirling leaves, and in the middle of it were Sasuke and Kakashi. Naruto narrows his eyes at the man and at Sasuke. Yo did we make it? Kakashi asks with an eye smile while Genma frowns. No Kakashi the Achiha was disqualified now get off the field. He says getting a shocked look from Kakashi and a look of anger from Sasuke. What? I can't be disqualified I'm an Achiha. The prick yelled while Genma snorts. And your point. Now beat a kid or I'll remove you from the field personally. Sasuke sees Gara and starts to charge at him in anger, but he is the knocked out by the Shinkan no Akihi's sheath courtesy to Naruto, who then tosses the brat at Kakashi who catches him. At your butt buddy off the field haddock. Naruto says coldly while the Jounin shivers from Naruto's words and vanishes into the stadium. Sorry about that Gara. It's always the arrogant and weak-minded ones that don't know when to piss off. He says while Gara nods. Apology accepted Yuzumaki. Shall we begin? He asks while Naruto nods and removes his jacket and swords, revealing his skin-tight shirt which showed his well-toned body. The females, minus Sakura blush at this. Mei however was licking her lips, if he's this gorgeous now I can't wait to see what he's like when he's older. She thought as did the other girls, again minus Sakura. He places Ryokin and Shinkan no Akihei on his back and then tosses his jacket to the side and when it hits the ground, a large crater is created, shocking everyone due to how wide and deep the crater was. Naruto stretches for a while and smirks. Let's get started Gara. He says and flares his chakra which was a dark blue color. Gara nods and the cork on his guard pops off and his sand swirls around the sociopath like a snake. Naruto grins and then leaps back when a sand tendril hits the area he was at. Naruto then pulls out Shinkan no Akihei and twirls the blade around for a while, then gets into a kinjutsu stance with his sword in a thrusting position. He then charges at the red-haired Genin and does a horizontal slash at his head, only for a wall of sand to block the attack, and Naruto jumps back when another tendril tries to strike him. Naruto then plants the blade on the ground and performs a few hand seals. Katen. Karyuenden. Fire release dragon flame bomb he says, and shoots red hot flames that was in the form of a dragon at Gara. Another wall of sand appears in front of Gara, while the flames hit the sand, turning it into glass. Naruto then sheathes his sword jumps into the air and performs more hand seals. Suetan. Tepidama, water release. Water bullets. He says and fires three water bullets from above Gara's head, but again the sand protects him. Naruto lands and backflips a couple of time to avoid being crushes and continues to fire water bullets at Gara, who starts to get bored at him firing water bullets at him. Naruto performs a few more seals and yells out. Suetan. Suayakuruyuudan, water release. Water hydra missile. He says and focuses his chakra into the ground. The ground trembles and suddenly, a large amount of water heads rises from the ground and morphs into a herda with glowing red eyes, and it hisses at Gara before charging at the red head. A dome of sand surrounds him, and when the water hydra makes contact, it explodes into water and soaks the field. Saratobi's eyes widen in amazement when he saw the technique. In the stands, the genin saw this, and their jaws dropped. Sasuke grits his teeth in frustration because he wasn't able to copy it for some reason. Damn it why can't I copy the jutsu he thought furiously, while well, Kakashi wondered how could he do a jutsu with his level of chakra control, wow, what an asshole. When the water dissolves, Naruto sees the sand drop, and Gara was unharmed. Is that it Yuzumaki? 
I expected more from you. He says and holds his hand out to have his sand constrict, but when the sand rises it falls back down. Ara's eyes widen in shock. What the he says and tries again only for it to do the same thing. Naruto chuckles and speaks up. You should know Gara, that when sand makes contacts with water it becomes soluble and results in becoming clump of mud. Its weakness is water and it needs to be dry in order to move freely, but that also means. He starts to say, but he then appears beside Gara, delivering a jaw-shattering punch to his face and send Gara flying into the wall, resulting in a crater appearing on a wall and Gara falling to the ground groaning while his face cracked and pieces of sand fell from his face. You're nothing more than a sandbag waiting to get ripped apart. I know about your sand armor being stronger than steel, but I wonder. Can you keep it intact? He says and charges at Gara, who growls out and sends a wave of dry sand at Naruto who leaps over it and shoots out a jet stream of water from his mouth, making the sand soggy, and then fires a second stream at Gara's Suna no Yorway, sand armor. The water makes contact with Gara's armor which turns dark brown, and he struggles to sit up because the water made it heavy. Here's another chemistry lesson Gara. What do you get when you add wet moldy sand with lightning? He asks as he focuses yellow lightning chakra into both hands and places them on the wet sand. You get a French fried redeed. Raiden. Raikunagashi, lightning release. Lightning current. He yells out and a huge current of electricity spreads throughout the ground. Gara screamed in pain as Naruto sent the currents to the gourd on his back and electricity coursed through the Tsunage in Churiki's body. The boy fell to the ground, panting with smoke rising out of certain parts of his body. Naruto watches as Gara starts to get up slowly and glare at Naruto. I will not lose. I will prove my existence. He says and his chakra spikes while Naruto curses. He then appears in front of Gara and grabs the Tsunanin by the throat. Sorry Gara, but I can't let you endanger the lives of these people. He says and adds pressure to the Redeed's neck, causing Gara to struggle for air, and he says and his fingertips on his right hand glow yellow. It's over Gara. Gaju Fuin. He cries out and slams his hand into Gara's stomach, causing the sand user to cry out in pain and then enter the world of darkness. Gara's unconscious form falls over, but the blonde catches him in his arm. Maybe now you can regain what you lost Sabaku no Gara. He says and sets the Suna down gently. He then lets out a sigh of relief and wipes a bead of sweat from his brow. Man that was close. I need to work on that suit in Jutsu though. It took too long for me to pull that water from the ground. Naruto says and stretches his arms. Again everyone was shocked that Naruto beat someone even Lee couldn't beat. Arachimaru was seething at the fact that this boy had ruined his plans. Naruto looks at Genma and speaks up. Well are you gonna call the match? He asks and Genma nods. Winner. Naruto Uzumaki. He says while the blonde does a victory sign while grinning. Mei was smiling as was Siratobi. Well done Naruto. Your parents would be proud. He said quietly. That was when the crowd cheered very loudly. Kiba jumped up shouting. Wuo. Alright Naruto. The Inuzuka cried out. Choji's eyes were wide and Ino's mouth was hanging open. Unbelievable. Naruto just beat Niji and that Gar guy. She said while Choji nods. Yosh. Naruto's flames of youth were amazing. He yells out while Lee was happy yet a little jealous that Naruto had beaten his rival and the kid from Suna. Sasuke was pissed beyond belief that Naruto, the dead last, had beaten someone of Gara's level, and what frustrated him even more was that he couldn't copy his jutsu. Why couldn't I copy his jutsu? How could the dobe, the dead last of the academy, get so strong? I should have that power. I need it more than he does. Sasuke rants into his mind while Kakashi wondered who trained Naruto and where he learned that water jutsu from. He'll just ask him and have him teach Sasuke that move, wow, what a jerk. Sakura thought she was dreaming that the Baka on their team beat that monster. There's no way Naruto's that strong. This has to be a trick. She says to herself. Izumo and Kitetsu were smirking. Damn. First he beats Niji like a rag doll, and then he beats the kid from Suna. The kid has come a long way. He should be promoted to Chunin after this. Izumo says while Kitetsu snorts. Junin? The kid should be a Takibetsu Jonin. His strategy and tactics were at least mid in level as was his stealth. Hell he even hinged himself into a fuma shuriken and kawaramite with a mizubushin. That takes a lot of skill to pull off. Kitetsu said. Naruto was about to walk back to the ring until a white-haired man wearing a kabuki outfit appeared in front of Naruto with a grin on his face. Yogaki, that was one hell of a match. He said while the blonde smirked. Thanks, sensei. He says while a deadpan look appears on Jiraiya's face. Something tells me that this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. He says while Naruto frowns at him. Yes it is you should know why. He says while Jiraiya groans. Damn it Gaki are you still mad at what happened? He asks with a peeved look on his face. You bet your perverted books I'm still mad Iro Senen. You walked in on Mei-chan when she was in her underwear. He yells at his godfather while everyone sweat drops at this. 
Mei however tilted her hat down to hide the blush on her face, while Hiruzen looks at Mei, and a smirk appears on his face. Care to explain Mizuka Jodono? He whispers. Shut up you old monkey. She mumbles while Hiruzen chuckles. Amitgaki how many times do I have to tell you that I thought you were in the room? He yells in his face. I told you I was in the room on the right side not left gum abaka. He yells back. I am not a baka you blonde haired brat. No. You're a superhero baka who needs to get his brain checked. Naruto yells back. What did you say? He yells. You heard me or are you deaf too? He yells back and they growl at each other. Ino blinks at the scene and then speaks. Who's he? She asks and Guy speaks up. That is Jiraiya, the Gama Senen who was taught by the Sandame, along with Tsunade Sama and Rachimaru. Jiraiya Sama was also the one who trained the Yandame Hokage. He may look odd, but he's as strong as a cage. He says in a serious tone. Sasuke frowns and clenches his fist. How the hell does the dope know him? He snarled while Guy ignored his attitude but answers. Who knows? He says, Orochimaru eyes narrow in frustration at the situation. God damn it Jiraiya is here too it's bad enough that the Mizukage is here, but now that fool is here too curses. Just you wait Siratobi I will kill you one of these days. He thought. Genma coughs so that he can get their attention. Not to be rude or anything Jiraiya-sama, but we still need to continue the matches. He says while Jiraiya rubs the back of his head and grins sheepishly. Sorry about that he then picks up Gara's unconscious form and looks at Naruto. I'll deal with fixing up the kid seal. He says and vanishes with a container of Shukaku. Damari had just came down from the stairs and then says. I forfeit Proctor. This is one match I know I can't win due to the fact that you beat my brother. She says while Naruto grins. Oh come now to Mari-chan. I won't rough you up that much unless you want me to. He says while wiggling his eyebrow while the blonde Kanoichi was blushing and looking at the ground. You pervert. She mumbles while he snickers at her. Winner of the Chunin exams, Naruto Uzumaki. Genma says getting a loud cheer from the crowd. Naruto smirks while wondering about the irony that he the village pariah was now gaining respect from the people who used to despise him. I'm proud of you Naruto-kun. Looks like I'll have to reward you for winning. She says in a husky tone while Naruto blushes and Kayu giggles. Meanwhile the Hokage, Mizukage, and Kazukiage appeared on the field as do the Genin, minus Gara, who stand before the three cages. Thank you all for participating in this exam, now will the following please approach me as I call them. Sabaku no Tamari, Shikamaru Nara, and Naruto Uzumaki. He says. Sasuke frowned and brooded that his name wasn't called, and the dead lasts was. The three called stepped forward. Tamari had a small smile, Shikamaru had a lazy look, and Naruto had a large grin on his face. Mei had to hold in hers while Sirotobi spoke up. You three have shown extraordinary skills in tactical expertise, strategy, cunning and trickery, also used a terrain to your advantage, then exploited your opponent's weaknesses. Therefore it is my honor and pride to dub you three as Chunin. Congratulations. He said. Mei handed them their certificates and their flak jackets, and she shook each one of their hands in respect. Naruto winked at Mei who also winks back at him. Now to the rest of you, don't give up and try to do better next time. This concludes the Chunin exams, we will see all of you in two years. He says. The people who came leave from their seats while Shikamaru groans. Troublesome. Now I have to do more work. He says while Naruto smirks. It's either that or deal with your mom and if I remember, she knocked you and your dad out of the house with a frying pan because you left the deer's pen open. He says while the Nara pales. Say, didn't Yoshino-san put you in a coma because you ate one of her pastries? He asks while the Naruto twitches. How should I know? I had amnesia when I woke up from being in it for two days. He said while Naruto blinks at him for a while. Dude it wasn't for two days it was for a week. He says while Shikamaru raises an eyebrow at him. And how would you know? He asks and Naruto snickers. I was there when it happened. I was helping your mom clean deer antlers. He says while the Nara walks away mumbling about blondes being too smart and moms with short fuses. Naruto saw Tamari walk up to him and speak. I still can't believe you beat Gara like that. She said while Naruto smiles at the blonde. You sound like you were worried about me Tamari-chan. He says while she crosses her arms against her chest smirking. Yeah I was fearing for your life. Anyway what happened to you? You went from a loud mouth shrimp to a hot blonde. She asks while he rubbed the back of his head while I he started to say until he heard Sakura screech out his name. Let's take this to the medical ward. Hiro Senen should be done with your brother's new seal. He says and wraps an arm around her waist, making her blush as they mizu shunshins to the ward to avoid the banshee and the brooder. Medical ward, Hiraya wipes the sweat that was on his head with his arms, finally finishing making Gara's new seal. Naruto appears with Tamari behind the sage who turns around and to see his godson. Hey Gaki Hushi. He asks and Tamari steps forward. I'm Sabaku no Tamari. The daughter of the Kazakiage and Gara's older sister. Is he alright? 
she asks with concern and walks over to her sleeping brother and panics. Wh why is he sleeping if he falls asleep the shukaku will she cries out, but Jiraiya places an arm on her shoulder. Relax I already knew about his sleeping problem. Don't worry, shukaku won't be bothering him at all. He says and gets up and pops his back. But I'm off to get a little R and R Naruto. I'll see you later. Ja. He says and disappears in a puff of smoke. Gara slowly opens his eyes and sees Tamari looking at him with a concerned look on her face. Kankuro had walked in and Naruto explained what happened. Damari. He asks while she reaches for his hand and places it in hers. The redeed freezes up at first, but when he sees the look of hurt in her eyes, he relaxes getting a small smile from her. Gara, I'm glad you're not hurt. She says while Gara looks around and sees Naruto leaned against the wall. Why didn't you kill me Uzumaki? I failed to prove my existence. I don't deserve to live. Gara says while a saddened expression appears on Tamari's face. Naruto sighs and gets off the wall. Simple Gara. 1. Your life was similar to mine and 2. I didn't want to break your sister's heart. He replied making Gara's eye widen. What do you mean? He asks. I'm a container just like you Gara. I know what it's like to live a life of hell, but the only difference was that I gained people who cared for me while you were left alone. Am I right? He asks while Gara just looks at him. You've suffered your whole life didn't you? No one to care for you or become your friend. You were declared as a monster and abomination by your own people weren't you? Gara's eyes widened even more. I would have ended like you if I hadn't met them. Seruoji, Choji, Shikamaru, Kiba, Akamaru, Mei-chan, Hirokaiofu, Haruka-sensei, the Ichirakus, Kaiu-chan. They saved me from my life of hell. His hair covers his eyes and he talks in a low tone. They are my precious people Gara, and I won't let you or anyone else whether their comrades or not harm them. If you try to harm them I'll stop you. He then looks at the Sunanin with cold slitted eyes. And if have to kill you to protect them I will. He says getting a shocked look from Gara. Why? Why go so far for them? He asks because he was till confused, and Naruto's gaze softens, because they're the ones who give me strength. As long as I have them by my side I can accomplish anything. Gara, you may not think it, but Tamari and Kankuro care about you. They're your family and they want to be there for you, but unless you stop being so cold and distant from them, you'll end up losing them. Naruto says while Gara looks over at Tamari and Kakuro who look back at their little brother with sympathy in their eyes. Tamari increases her grip on Gara's hand a little, and her eyes become glassy. Don't push them away Gara, let them in, and I promise that you won't regret it. He says while Gara thinks about what he said. So he gains his strength from people who are important to him huh? Perhaps. Perhaps I can too. I may not have as many people as he does, but at least I have Kankuro and Tamari. Maybe I'll gain more in the future. Naruto Uzumaki. Thank you. He says and looks at his siblings. Kankuro. Tamari. I'm sorry. He says. Tears form around Tamari's eyes, and she lets go of his hand and pulls her brother into a hug. While sobbing quietly. Gara's eyes widen at the hug, but relaxes and rests his head on her shoulder. Kankuro walks over to them and places his hand on his sister's shoulder and on Gara's back. Don't sweat it Gara. We're family no matter what. He says. A family huh? I like that. He says with a true smile on his face and falls asleep on his sister's shoulder. Tamari places him back down gently and then gets up and walks over to Naruto. She then hugs the blonde Chunin. Thank you Naruto-kun, thank you for helping my brother and bringing my family back together. She says and hugs him even tighter. Naruto blushes in embarrassment but returns it. You're welcome Tamari-chan. He says. She lets go of him and kisses him on the cheek. Kankuro smirks at this and Naruto rubs the back of his head. Oh and Kankuro do us a favor and stop wearing your sister's makeup. People might take it the wrong way and think you're gay. He says with a cheeky grin and shunshins away, leaving a pissed Kankuro and a laughing Tamari. Stupid Gaki, it's war paint. He mumbles. Meanwhile, Mei was on the roof of the Golden Leaf Hotel and felt a pair of arms wrap around her waist. She smiles and turns her head to see a smiling Naruto who lets go of her and walks beside her, holding his hand into hers. Congratulations on your promotion Naruto-kun. She said while he smiles. Thanks. I owe it all to you my Unabara no Megami, goddess of the sea. He says while a tint of pink appears on her face and tightens her grip on his hand. I just helped you with your training, that's all Naruto-kun. I didn't do that much. She says but Naruto leans over and kisses her on the cheek. Yes you did Mei-chan and I'm eternally grateful for your help. He replies while she looks at him with a loving smile on her face. Thank you Naruto-kun. Your parents would be proud of you. I know I am. I just hope this engagement between us will turn out great. I really want this to work Naruto-kun she says, and he smiles at her. It will Mei-chan. I'm positive it'll work out. I know this seems to be rushed, but I feel like I've known you for a long time. He says and she nods in agreement. She was about to say something until he saw Kakashi appear looking at Naruto. 
Naruto. Kakashi said while the blonde just gave Kakashi an icy glare that made him nervous. Mei just looks at him with a blank expression, but on the inside she was furious that this fool interrupted their moment. What do you want Haddock? Can't you see that I'm talking to the Mizukage right now? He said in a cold tone making the copy nin flinch, but remained stoic. I just came to tell he started to say but was cut off. I'm not interested in hearing any of your stupid ass excuses, nor do I have the patience to deal with your bullshit, so what the hell do you want? He said making his tone even harsher. Akashi cringed at the sound of his voice. Where did you learn those jutsu and where did you get those swords? He asks while Naruto's eyes narrowed. That's none of your fucking business. He answers while Kakashi decides to pull rank. I asked you a question Chunin now answer it. He ordered and Naruto eyes flash red for a moment and was releasing Kai on the nin until the Mizukage placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder and speaks. I suggest you leave Jounin. I was in the middle of having a conversation with this young man until you decided to be rude. Mei spoke up while Kakashi gave her a lazy look. With all due respect Mizukage Dono, I don't have to listen to you because you are not the cage of this village. He says but instantly regrets saying it when he feels murderous intent coming from Naruto and Mei. What the fuck are you doing you idiot? She's a VIP in the village and you dare talk to her like she's a fucking commoner. Are you trying to get us in trouble you dumbass? Naruto snarled and was a few seconds from punching this idiot in the face for talking to his fiancé like that. You shouldn't talk like that in front of the Mizukage Nero shut the fuck up you dumbass baka. I'll talk anyway, I want now get the hell out of my sight you trash before I dub you as a threat to our client and have you arrested and stop staring at her chest before I beat the shit out of you and get you demoted. The blonde yelled while Kakashi narrowed his eyes at Naruto. What did you call me? He says in a low tone. I called you trash because that's what you are. I'm not gonna tell you again to leave Haddock. Naruto growled and flexed his hands. Kakashi frowned at the blonde. Naruto I know you're mad that I didn't train you but Sasuke said, but was interrupted by Mei. Had what it took to be a shinobi and deserved to move up into the ranks. You also said that you won't waste your time with someone who can't even control his own chakra and said he didn't have any talent and shouldn't even be a ninja, did you not say that Jounin? Mei said while Kakashi paled when he looked at her. How did you I was in the hospital when I heard you neglect your student. You could have given him a scroll or a few books on how to improve his chakra since you were too lazy and stupid to help a subordinate. You know what? I bet you were hoping that the high Uga would kill him during the finals. She said while the Jounin's eyes widened. And no I. I am very disappointed with you and I am sure the Hokage is too since I reported to him how insensitive one of his Jounin were. He was very displeased with your actions and told me that he will deal with you accordingly. She said with a smirk on his face while Kakashi turned as white as a sheet. He was about to say something else, but Mei snaps her fingers and four of her personal Anbu appeared around her and Naruto with their ninjados drawn. Leave her I'll consider you a threat to my life and have my Anbu kill you. She said and Kakashi shunshins away. Mei snaps her fingers again and the Anbu melt back under the roof. Naruto lets out a frustrating sigh and brushes his hair back. Mei sees this and wraps her arms around him and kisses him on the forehead. Are you okay Naruto-kun? Mei asks him, but he nods. Yeah I'll be fine. I was 10 seconds from feeding that baka his own teeth. He says while Mei giggles at him. Can you believe that he was ogling you? I swear the next person who looks at you like that will be getting their eyes ripped out of their head. Only I can look at you like that. He says with a cheeky grin on his face and grabs her hand. Mei couldn't help but blush at what he says and was about to say something until an explosion was heard from the main gate, getting their attention. Mei Chan you head to the Hokage Tower. I'll go check and see what that explosion was. He says and she nods. Okay but be careful. She says and Naruto nods back and kisses her hand. Naruto shunshins away. Anbu. She called out. The four previous Kiri Anbu appeared around her. We're heading to the Hokage Tower. She says getting a nod from her men who follow her to the Hokage Tower. At the main gate, civilians were running away screaming while three three-headed snakes were hissing and demolishing buildings with their tails. Some ninja were escorting the civilians, while the others tried to hold them off by throwing kunai shuriken and casting jutsu. Orochimaru and Kabuto were watching this from a tree far away. My invasion may have failed, but that doesn't mean I won't leave Konoha without giving them a farewell gift. He said with a sneer on his face. Kabuto tilts his glasses up and speaks. Should we stay and watch how this occurs Orochimaru-sama? The medical nin asks. A smirk appears on the hebe's face. As fun as that would be I have more important matters to attend to. And Kabuto if you ever get the chance, kill Naruto Uzumaki. That brat has been a pain lately and I want his head mounted on my wall. He hisses out while Kabuto nods and they vanish. Meanwhile Naruto had landed on the street and saw one of the three-headed snakes. Time to let Yamachan out to play. He says and bites his thumb then rolls up the sleeve on his right arm, revealing the Hydra tattoo. 
He smears his blood on the tattoo and slams his hands onto the ground. Kuchius no Jutsu. Yamada no Arachi. He cries out and in a huge puff of smoke, a hydra with eight heads and tails, silver-colored scales and a black underbelly, and four legs with black claws on them, appeared with her eight tails swishing around and the seven heads swaying back and forth. She also had two folded black bat-like wings on each of her sides. It was Yamada no Arachi, queen of the reptile clan and divine beast of the dragon clan, her land form is the form of a dragon. Naruto was on the middle head while the snake stopped causing destruction and looked up, only to tremble in fear at who they saw. Some of the ninja saw the new summon and started to sweat bullets. Oh no not another one. One Jounin called out, but the other one was wondering. Why isn't the snake attacking? What's it waiting for? The second one asks. Hey isn't that Yuzumaki on that snake? The third Jounin asks while the others squint his eyes. It is. But why would he summon a snake? The first one asks. That's not a snake. Said a deep voice. They turned around to see the Sandame in his battle uniform. Sandame sama If that isn't a snake then what is it? He asks while Saratobi looks at him. That is Yamada no Arachi, the Hachibi no Akihe and ruler of the divine reptiles. He says while their eyes widen. She's a Bijuu? The Anbu with a lion mask asks. Yes but she's a divine beast. He replies while their eyes widen. I wonder how he got that contract. Probably from Mei. He says quietly. Meanwhile one of Arachi's heads looks at Naruto. Hello, Naruto-kun. I didn't expect to have you summon me so soon. Shiroi says while Naruto looks at her with a small grin. Hey Shiroi-chan. I thought you'd like to get reacquainted with some old friends. He says pointing to the three snakes. Another of her heads look at the quivering forms of the snakes and an evil grin appears on her face. Well well well, if it isn't the triplets. I'm gonna enjoy hearing you vile worm scream. Her seven heads let out a might roar, making the earth beneath them shake. She then walks towards the trembling snakes and then she spreads her large wings and takes off into the sky. Whoa. Naruto cries out and adds chakra to his feet to stop himself from falling. Sorry, Naruto-kun. She says while he lets out a sigh of relief. Don't worry I'm fine. I didn't know you had two forms Shiroi-chan. Naruto says and she smiles. Yes I have two forms. The one you saw in my realm was my water form. This is my land form. She says while Naruto nods. Cool. But I think your human form is way better. He says while a tint of pink appears on her face. We can flirt later fox boy, but now we have some bugs to exterminate. She says getting a nod from the blonde. Hey Naruto get ready to perform a wind jutsu. She said and one of the heads opens its mouth and a ball of red fire appears swirling around. Naruto nods and performs a few seals and sucks in air. Fuitin. Nujin de Tapa, infinite great breakthrough. He then unleashes a huge gust of wind at the three snakes, while Shiroi's head shoots out a powerful red flame. Katen. Akihayenku, Hydra Flame. Yujutsu. Hinitbufu, Fusion Jutsu. Firestorm. The fire combines with the wind, creating a huge fire that moves towards the snakes at high speed, and the attack hits. The snakes cry out in pain as they were reduced to charcoal, and their forms collapse while the flames devour their bodies. Shiroi cackles with glee in her eyes when she saw the burning bodies of the snakes while landing near the rubble. The Akihei then lowers her head down, and Naruto leaps off her head. Thanks Shiori-chan. Anytime Naruto-kun. Let's do this again. Ja. She says and disappears in a puff of smoke. Naruto sniffs the air and smells the scent of burning snake meat. You. He says while some of the Chunin and Jounin perform water jutsu to put the burning snakes out. That was when Jiraiya appeared out of nowhere grinning and pats the kid on the back. Nice bonfire gaki. He says and the blonde looks at his godfather. Where were you Kyofu? Naruto asks while Jiraiya shrugs. Just went to swat a few flies. Anyway thanks for dealing with those snakes. I was on my to help you, but when I saw Yamada I figured you had the situation under control and let you increase your rep. He says while Naruto chuckles at the man. Thanks I he started to say until he heard a voice Ho didn't want to hear. Hey dope. Sasu yells with Sakura following behind him. Naruto smacks his head when he saw those two. Oh Kami. He mutters while Jiraiya raises an eyebrow when the Ichiha approaches him. I saw you riding on that creature and performing that jutsu. Where did you get them? He demanded. None of your business Achiha now piss off. He says while the Achiha frowns. I wasn't asking looser now tell me where you got that creature, those swords, and those jutsu now. He yelled Yabaka tell Sasu come where you got those at. Sakura screamed and Jiraiya winced from her voice. Naruto suddenly appeared in front of Sasuke's face and grabbed him by the collar of his shirt, shocking the Achiha and releasing Kai on the boy. Now you listen here you jutsu stealing cock sucking emo. He said making the brooder's eyes widen. I don't have to tell you shit. 
I'm a Chunin you bitch, and I can have your shinobi license suspended or have you removed from the program permanently for ordering me around, and the last time I checked, only the Hokage can order the ninja around, and you little boy are not the Hokage. Now get the fuck out of my sight before I break you in half. He said and throws the Achiha into the street. Sasuke gets up slowly and glares at the blonde Chunin and gets ready to pull out a kunai until he felt a kunai pressed against his neck and realized that the Naruto in front of him was a clone who disperses and the real Naruto was behind him, ready to slit his throat. Attempting to attack a fellow ninja is considered a B-class felony and by all rights I can have you thrown in jail for a long time. I'm letting you off with a warning Achiha, but if you try to do this again I will kill you. He said in dark tone while Sasuke shivered in fear. Now Jenin get your sorry ass out of my sight. He said and disappears in a puff of smoke, then appears next to Jiraiya with a murderous look on his face. Sasuke desiccated to be smart for once and leaves. Sakura was about to yell at Naruto for threatening her Sasuke-kun until the blonde gives her an icy glare to. You leave to you slut. Go stalk your faggot of a boyfriend and suck his dick because that's all you're good for. Bait in being a slut now piss off before I hurt you. He growled. Tears well up in Sakura's eyes and she runs away from the sight. Naruto spits on the ground and then walks away with Jiraiya following him. Damn Gaki if looks could kill you and your father would win big time. Hell your mother would probably make someone like Orochimaru run away screaming like a girl. He said chuckling while Naruto smirks. That was when an Anbu appears in front of them. Yuzumaki Sanjureya Sama, Hokage Sama and the council wish to see you. He said and vanishes again. An evil grin appears on Naruto's face and he chuckles darkly. Jureya sees this and backs away slowly. You got that smile on your face again Gaki. Are you thinking of doing something that is cruel and unusual? He asks and cringes when Naruto turns towards him with the same look. You bet you itcha itcha books I do. My heritage. He says and Jiraiya also gets an evil grin on his face. Kid I knew you were dangerous, but damn. The council is so screwed when you tell them about your heritage. He said. Oh they're not screwed, they're fucked big time. He says laughing evilly as they head for the Hokage Tower. Council chambers. Naruto and Jiraiya walked inside of the room to see the civilian council, the elders, along with Danzo glaring at Naruto. The shinobi side who were made up the clan heads look like they didn't want to be here. Okay I'm not pointing this to the shinobi side or to the hokage, but what the fuck do you assholes want? I have better things to do than listen to you retards yell and bitch about me being the demon brad and trying to execute me. He says getting a huge glare from the civilians and elders while the shinobi side held in their laughs. Tsum let out a snort while Siratobi coughed. You will show us some respect you brat. A civilian member yelled only to get an icy glare from the blonde and he shivered from the gaze. Shut up civilian you may be a member of this council, but you will not order me, an ninja around. Now shut your yap or I'll do it for you. He said trailing his hands on the hilt of Ryakin. The civilian gulped and shut it his yap when he saw the sword. Now I'll ask again. What the fuck do you assholes want? He asks in a harsher tone. Yuzumaki-san, we would like to know who trained you for the finals. Chaoza asks and Naruto smirks. By Jiraiya of course. Since I wasn't worthy of being trained by the perverted Cyclops who spends his time being the Ichiha's personal cocksucker, Sensei here saw the potential I had and decided to train me to face the fate addict. No offense Hiyashi-sama, but your nephew needed no, had that beating coming, and I hope you don't take my insult to your clan the wrong way. He said while Hiyashi nods. None taken young man. He says while Naruto nods a thanks to the man. Why would Jiraiya-sama train someone like you and not the Ichiha? He has more potential. Danzo says while Naruto snorts. Please, that brat would have died if he fought Gara and is for potential. Please. I have more skill in my pinky finger than he does in his whole body. Naruto says wiggling his finger while the civilian council fumed. How dare you speak to Ichiha-sama like that? Who do you think you are? The Haruno council woman screeched making everyone wince at her voice. The one who rip your voice box out if you don't stop screaming like a damn howler monkey. Naruto yelled out while she cringes in her seat. Hiraya we of the council demand you train Sasuke Chiha, since you trained the demo Hamura started to say until Hiruzen glared at the man. Finish that word Hamura and I'll have you executed and also who are you to command my ninja around. Last I checked I was wearing the Hokage hat. He said releasing some Kai at the frightened man. Hiraya scoffed and folded his arms. Like I would train that spoiled brat. He can kiss my A on second thought, I'd better start watching it because I think the brat plays for the other side. He says turning green. Hiraya. Kahari yells while the man blinks, giving her a look of innocence. What? He doesn't seem to be interested in girls so he must like boys. He replies while Naruto snickers. I agree. All those fangirls that chase after him and he doesn't even look at them. I'm beginning to think he is gay. But Chihasama is not gay. Haruno yelled while Naruto growls at her. Didn't I tell you to shut up you flat-chested bitch? The pink-haired woman growled at him until Siratobi spoke up. Enough. 
I didn't summon you here to listen to you civilians whine now shut up. He roared and they did. And you three don't order my ninja around unless I give you permission to do so am I clear. He said glaring at the fools and they nod fearing for their lives. Now I have come to announce that I will be stepping down as Hokage and I've already picked who will replace me. He said and they listened. Danzo fumed because he wanted to be Hokage but he can't since he already competed for the title. It better not be me sensei. I have better things to do than be a paper pusher and listen to people fight like five-year-olds. Jiraiya said digging into his ear with his pinky finger while civilians and elders fumed at him while the shinobi side snickered. Here is in chuckles and says. No Jiraiya it's not you it's my other student. Sunade send you. Danzo was sweating inwardly. Sunade was the granddaughter and grandniece of the Shadame and Nidame and was practically royalty. Sunade sama She hasn't set one foot into the village since the third war ended. Inoichi said while Jiraiya smirked. Oh I think I can convince Tsune to return, since her nephew is still alive and was lied to by certain members of this council. He said in a dark tone while the elders sweated inwardly. The clan head's eyes widen when Tsume speaks up. She has a nephew. Who is he and is he in the village? Jiraiya and Naruto smirk. You're looking at him. He says and places his hand on the Gaki's head. Tell them my full name Kaiofu. He says with a dark grin on his face. The civilians look like they were seeing the Shinigami. His full name is Naruto Namikaze Senju. He says while the civilians turn white, the elders pale, and the clan head's eyes widen. Why you mean a civilian says only for Naruto to cut him off. That's right asshole. I'm the son of the Yande Man Yellow Flash Minato Namikaze and Kishina Yuzumaki Senju the Red Whirlpool. I guess that makes my status on par with the daimyos. He said as his grin grew and the civilians yell out in outrage. You lie. You are not related to our cages. I refuse to believe that the demon Brad is the son of the he never got the chance to finish and ended up having a blade shoved through his mouth and killed by Ryokin. Naruto pulls his sword out of the now dead councilman's head and wipes the blood off with the dead man's clothes. Does anyone else want to break the Sandame's law? He asks in a cold tone making the civilians and elders cringe in their seats. I didn't think so also speaking of my inheritance as the last heir of the Senju and Namika's clan, I'm demanding that the civilian council make retributions to me for treating me like shit as well as those who were under your peril. The orphanage that I was kicked out of when I was four. I'm having the employees that treated me like crap fired and executed and it now belongs to me. The same with those who kicked me out of stores, restaurants and other markets will have their things confiscated and given to me and the same goes with the businesses that I own under my father's name and also the academy teachers who tried to neglect my training. They're gonna get fired and thrown in prison with their chakra sealed away forever. Failure comply with my demands will result in me taking everything you own by force and then executed. He said in a cold told while the civilians trembled in fear. Most of their businesses did come from the Namikas and now they were screwed. If you think my demands were merciful just wait until Tsunade Obasan gets back here. I now own you bastards and if you even think about stepping out of line I'll kill you. He replied while Haruno frowned at the blonde. Also why was it that my fiancé was lied to about my death, Kaharu Hamura, Danzo? Naruto asks giving the old fossils an icy cold glare. Said elders were sweating inwardly. WH what are you talking about? Kaharu asks only for Naruto to narrow his eyes. Don't play stupid with me you ancient relic. I have proof that you bastards committed treason and nearly caused Konoha to go to war with another nation. He says while they gulp. Naruto then turns his head to the door. You can come in now Mei-chan. He says and the door opens revealing the Mizukage walking towards Naruto. She places her hands on the sides of his face and then kisses him fully on the lips while everyone watches in shock as Naruto returns it and places an arm around her waist and pulls her closer to his body. A grin appears on Jiraiya's and Saratobi's face while the elders cursed inwardly. Kai was watching the scene while eating popcorn. This is getting good. Damn how long can Naruto come and may hold that kiss for? She thought as they kept at it. Meanwhile, Mei and Naruto ended the kiss and smiled at her. Did you miss me Mei-chan? Naruto asks while she smiled back. I sure did Naruto-kun. She says in a seductive tone. He looks at everyone while keeping his arm around her waist. Everyone, this is my fiancé, Mei Terumi the god in Mizukage, or should I say Mei Terumi Namikaze. He says. Anzo was now livid. Damn it. Now here is and knows that I sent my root members to her. He thought while well, Saratobi smirked at the warhawk. That's right you fool. You can hide your drones from me, but I can now remove your two pawns. If you try anything I will have you killed. The god of shinobi thought as he saw the look of fear in Danzo's face. Now that Naruto's inheritance has been revealed, he'll be receiving everything from both the Namikas and Senju clan estates. Not only that, but everything that he has demanded from certain members on this council will be given to him and if you fail to do so, I'll have you removed from the council, your possessions taken by force and your families living on the streets. 
he said with a stern look on his face. Arudo and May grinned at the civilians who were gulping in fear. They had wronged an heir who belonged to not one, but two clans, and they were paying the price for it. Saratobi then looks at Kaharu and Hamura. And as for you two, how dare you deceive another cage by sending a document I didn't approve of and forge my seal of approval. You idiots realize that an action like that would have caused a war between us, he yelled at his former teammates. We did what was necessary, Saratobi. We couldn't allow the boy to be in another village. Hamura said not caring that he could have started a war that he was sure Kanoha would win, and Kahara nodded. You and the Yandane were being foolish and trying to make peace with a weak village like Kiri. We do not need to associate ourselves with barbarians like her. She said glaring at the Mizukij, but they instantly regretted it when Naruto grabbed them by their throats and lifted them off their seat and near his face. Naruto's eyes were now crimson and his fangs became longer. Both elders were struggling from his grip while he tightened his hold on their necks, making them choke. How dare you talk to my fiancé like that you pieces of shit. I should kill you both right now for all the hell you've put me and my family through, but I'm not because I'll be hurting your grandchildren. If you value your lives I suggest you shut up from now on, or I'll send you on a one-way trip to meet the Shinigami do I make myself clear. He says making them nod in pain and drops them on their asses. Saratobi then snaps his fingers, and four Anbu appear. Place Kaharu and Hamura under house arrest for treason and for interfering in clan and foreign affairs. You two are no longer my advisors or permitted to come to council meetings unless I say so. Be lucky Naruto is merciful because I know Tsunade won't be when she gets her hands on you. He says while the Anbu dragged the struggling elders away. Naruto I don't doubt your power or anything, but do you think it's wise for your heritage to be known? Tsu asks while Naruto looks at her. If you're concerned about Iwa knowing then I'm not worried. I doubt they want to start another war with us since the last thing they need is a second yellow flash crippling their forces. He says with a smirk on his face. Plus we're allies with Karigakur and Sunagakur and speaking of Suna what's going to be done about them? Naruto asks. We should wipe them off the map. They plotted an invasion with an S-class criminal who was from this village and shouldn't get away with it. Danzo said while Naruto glared at him. Shut up you old fool. If we did that then that'll make us look bad to the other villages. We are not barbarians so shut up. You're annoying. He said and Danzo glared at him with his one eye. Tsuna was desperate due to the loss of military power since the wind daimyo cut their funding and sent missions to us. Therefore, they had no choice and joined Orochimaru who can be highly persuasive when he wants to be. Inoichi says. So to prove that they are still our allies, Tsuna is offering the former Kazukiya's daughter, Tamari in a political marriage to a shinobi of our choosing. The Yamanaka finished. She should be given to the Achea. She is strong and will bear him powerful children. Haruno said with the civilians agreeing. You have no say in the matter civilian. This is a matter between shinobi not you people. Hiashi said while they fumed since their power was reduced to a minimum. Sasuke Chiha was not the one who defeated their strongest ninja, so Tamari is being given to Naruto Namikas. Shibi Aburam says getting a raised eyebrow from the Namikas Senju. The Ichiha would have been killed if he faced Gara, who is the container for the Ichibi no Tanuki Shukaku. Naruto san knew Gara's weakness, which was his sand, and used water and lightning jutsu to beat his attacks. He also used a few injutsu that cuts him off from his biju, making him weaker, so Sun Agakur didn't want to face the power of the one who beat Gara, they're offering his sister to you, Naruto san. Shibi says while the blonde rubs the back of his head. Oh well as long as she agrees with it, then I'll be more than happy to accept it since I fall under the craw. I already talked to Mei-chan about it and she was okay with it. He says while the clan members nod. Since Naruto is the Mizukage's future husband and he is the only one she trusts, he should be the ambassador for us in Kiri. Shikaku says. Okay is that all? Naruto asks until Haruno speaks up. No we want to know why you attacked Ichihasama. She yelled and a vein appeared on his face. That prick demanded me, a Chunin to tell him where I gained my techniques, and when I refused, he tried to attack me by pulling out a kunai, so I restrained him and threatened him that if he tried something like that again, I'd kill him, since attacking a comrade is a B-class felony, which would have gotten him sent to prison, and his chakra and bloodline sealed now shut up. And keep your slut of a daughter away from me or you regret it you whore. He said unleashing Kyoder, and she falls out of her chair and runs away. After the meeting the civilians were dismissed, and the clan heads left also. Alright Gaki, let's go get my teammate. Last I heard she was in a town called Tenzaku Gai, so let's hurry and get back. Mei-san would you like to accompany us so that you and Naruto can get better acquainted? Gureya asks with a lecherous grin on his face, but then leaps out of the window because Naruto tries to cut him in half with his Ryokin. He sheathes it mumbling Iro Senen, while Mei giggles but eeps when Naruto holds her in his arms bridal style, while the blonde grins at her surprised expression. He then looks at Saratobi and disappears in a swirl of water. To Tanzaku Gai. Gureya was ahead of the others, mumbling about short tempered blondes while rubbing the lump that was on his head. 
Naruto was carrying Mei in his arms bridal style while she rested her head on his chest. Naruto got a good view of her cleavage, causing a tint of pink to appear on his face. Mei saw this and moved her body a little to give him a better view. Like would you see Naruto come? She asks while his eyes look the other way. Mei giggled and kissed him on the cheek. I don't mind you ogling my chest. I actually prefer if you did than your godfather. She says while he snickers. I heard that. Jiraiya says while Mei just giggles. I think it's better that I walk now Naruto come. She says while Naruto shakes his head. No can do Mei chan. I don't want you ruining your beautiful feet on the hard and dirty ground. He says while she smiles at him. Well aren't you sweet. But don't your arms hurt from carrying me this far. She asks while Naruto smiles and kisses her on the nose. We get tired of carrying my Tenshi. Never. I have arms of steel Mei-chan. He says. Mei sighs and rests her head on his chest. Naruto kisses her forehead and walks up to catch up with Jiraiya. Hotel. After they checked into the hotel Jiraiya ran off with some female who winked at him Well, Naruto sighs at that and he and lets Mei down. They head upstairs to the room they rented. Naruto unlocks the door and throws his backpack on the floor and Mei sets hers down also. The blonde then places his swords next to the bed and Mei removes her sandals and shin guards. Naruto sits on the bed while Mei walks over to the blonde and sits on his lap and Naruto wraps his arms around her waist. Think Jiraiya will come back anytime soon. Mei asks while Naruto shrugs let Hirosen and go do his research. It just means more alone time for you and me. He says and tickles her sides while she giggles and squirms in his grip. He stops and she wraps her arms around his neck and they go into a lip locking session. Naruto moves his hand down to her exposed leg and strokes it, making Mei shiver and let out a moan when he moves his hand up and down her leg. Naruto removes his lips from hers and starts to kiss her jawline while Mei lets out a sigh. His hands explore her curved and flawless body and he makes his way to her neck. Mei moves her hand through his soft blonde and spiky hair and places her other hand on his chiseled chest. Said blonde moves back up to her jawline and then to her lips. Their makeout session continues until Naruto's eyes widen as does Mei's. They then stop. Mei gets off his lap and they get up slowly. Mei do you sense that? He asks and she nods. Hi and they're close. I know one of them is familiar and has the chakra of a jinchuriki. The other is a mystery to me. She says. The other one is Itachi Ichi. I remember that chakra level. He killed his entire clan in one night. Naruto picks up his bag and hers. Mei places his swords on her back and puts her sandals and shin guards back on. They then slowly move towards the window and Naruto carefully opens it. A knock was heard and the blonde curses. Mei-chan come on. He whispers she nods and looks out the window. She then sees a platform and steps out on it. Naruto then does the same and then closes the window. Outside in the hall were two figures wearing a black cloak with red clouds. One was taller than the other. He was blue and wore a mist headband with a scratch symbol on it. He also had what seemed to be gills on the sides of his cheeks and on his back was a man-sized sword that was wrapped up in bandages. He was Kisum Hashigaki. Next to him was a male with raven black hair that was tied into a ponytail and he had red eyes with three tomos in them. He was Itachi Ichi. They were following Jiraiya, Naruto, and Mei so that they could capture Naruto for the Kaiubi. Itachi knocked on the door again but once more, no one answered. Isum was getting impatient and growled. Fuck this. He said and kicked the door off its hinges and walked in. Itachi did too and looked around for any source of chakra. He narrowed his eyes at the window for a while and spoke up. Let's go kiss him. They're not in this room. He said and the shark nin nodded. They left out of the room to search for their target. Meanwhile, Mei had her arms around Naruto's neck while he slid down a water pipe. When Naruto's feet touched the ground, Mei let go of him and lets out a sigh of relief. That was close. We should find Jiraiya and leave as soon as possible. I can handle Itachi, but Kisum is one person you don't want to fight. His chakra levels are on par with a Jinchuriki's, and he also has a sword that eats chakra. Come on Naruto come. It's only a matter of time before they realize we're not in that inn. She says and he nods. He grabs her hands and leads her into the crowd of people. Meanwhile Kisum was fuming at the fact that they lost the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. That damn kid and the Mizukage gave us the slip Itachi. What do we do now? Go after them. Itachi closes his eyes, then reopens them. Come kiss him. It appears that we're on a hunt. He says and the shark grins. Mei and Naruto were currently leaping from roof to roof until the blonde Chunin curses. Shit. They already realized that we gave them the slip and are heading our way. Mei-chan let's head to that clearing in the forest. We can't fight those guys in the town otherwise everyone here will get caught in the crossfire. He said. Mei nods and they head to the forest. Itachi and Kisum were following them, and the Kirinin grinned. So they want to take this fight away from civilization, eh? I can't wait to get reacquainted with Mei. Who would have thought that she of all people would become a cage? He said placed his hand around the hilt of his sword. 
don't get cocky kiss him. We don't know the extent of Naruto's abilities and that could get you killed. Same goes for the Mizukage don't get too excited. He said while Kissim grunts. You sure know how to ruin my fun Itachi. Kissim grumbled while a small smirk appeared on Itachi's face while they increased their speed. Forest clearing, Naruto and Mei land in the clearing of the forest. Naruto throws off the backpacks and Mei tosses him Raikin and Shinkan no Akuhi. Naruto places both blades on his back and cracks his neck. That's when Itachi and Kissim appeared a few feet away from them. So you guys finally caught up. It's been a while Itachi or should I say Mangasan. He says while a small smirk appears on Itachi's face. So you remember my Anbu Nime Naruto-kun? You've gotten taller. He says in monotone. The blonde smirks at this. Mei however frowns when she sees Kissim grinning and stroking the hilt of his sword with his fingers. Why hello Mei-chan. I heard you are now the Mizukage of Kurigakur. Congratulations. How is Shijiro doing? He asks while she scoffs at him. He's fine, but I don't think you came all this way just to talk about the good old days, did you? She asks getting a chuckle from the shark man. No I didn't actually we're here for the brat so if you could just hand him over please do. I don't want to shave off that pretty face of yours. He says showing his sharp white teeth. May narrows her eyes at the monster of the mist. If you think I'll let you touch Naruto-kun then you better think twice. She says while Kissim lets out a sigh. He then removes the bandaged sword from his back and slams the blade on the ground hard, creating a small crater. You always were the stubborn one in the group May. Now I have no other choice but to use force. He says and grins evilly. Naruto-kun we can do this the easy way or hard way. Come with us and she won't be harmed. Itachi says making Naruto narrow his eyes and pull out Shinkan no Akuhei. I have a better suggestion. I kill you and tuna fish over there and collect the bounties on your heads. He replies while Kissim growls at being called that name. Watch your mouth brat or I'll cut off your arms and legs. He says. Itachi sighs and looks at Naruto. Apparently I'll have to use force. Itachi says and opens his eyes fully, revealing a fully mature Sharingan. Naruto's eyes become as cold as ice and he twirls his sword around twice. I know I can't beat you Itachi, but I can at least injure you. He says and his sword glows white. He then dios a vertical slash, creating a crescent chakra wave at the missing nin. Itachi moves to the left and charges at Naruto pulling a katana from under his sleeve. Naruto does the same and when they meet, their blades, causing small sparks to fly. Mei pulls out a scroll and opens it, the seal on it glows, and a puff of smoke appears. Out of the scroll appears a strange-looking sword that looks like a Zweihander with a red hilt, Red Queen from Devil May Cry. She grabs the hilt with her right hand and places the flat side of her sword on her shoulder. Isum chuckles while he lifts Samahada up into his. Oh ho, it appears that Samahada, Sharkskin, and Kenham, Blaze Princess, get to play again. I wonder if your Kenjutsu got any better. He says while Maya removes the flat end from her shoulder and holds the hilt with both blades. She then twists the hilt making the blade glow a reddish-orange color. I'll be then happy to show you traitor. She says in a dark tone while Kissim's grin grew even bigger and the two swordsmen charge towards each other with flames trailing from Kinham. Itachi and Naruto were engaging into a sword fight with Naruto on the defense. Itachi seems to be forcing Naruto back and then he unleashes a kick at Naruto's chest while the blonde leaps over it and land behind Itachi. He then swings at Itachi's side while the ex-Anbu captain turns and blocks it with the flat end of his sword and Naruto pushes against it with his sword. Itachi then breaks the stalemate and does a thrusting strike with his sword at Naruto's head to side steps but ends up getting a small cut on his cheek. Naruto growls and performs a series of slashes and thrusts at Itachi, who had to increase his speed a little due to the fact that Naruto got in a few cuts and slashed at his arms and shoulders. Isum swung Samahada vertically and horizontally at Mei who ducks, sidesteps, and weaves from the attacks. She then ducks under a slash that went for her head and she performs a stabbing attack at his torso. Kissum sidesteps the move and raises his sword into the air. He brings it down and she leaps back while the sword causes another small crater. He then charges and swings at Kissum's head, but the shark man blocks it with the flat end of his sword, but winces when the flames from the sword scorch his left leg and right arm. Mei then jumps in the air and kicks the shark hard in the face hard, sending him skidding back a little. Kissum glares at her while blood fell from his broken nose. Kissum pushes it back in place and licks the blood off his lips. That's what I'm talking about. He says with his eyes filled with bloodlust and charges at her, increasing his speed. His sword strikes start to get faster and Mei starts to move her body faster to avoid the strikes. Isum then brings his sword up into the air and brings it down fast. Mei blocks it using both hands on her sword, but she then grunts at the strength behind it. D damn it. I forgot about his strength. I can barely hold it off. She said while gritting her teeth while Kissim grins as the tip of the sword makes its way to her left shoulder. Have you forgotten Mei? My blade Samahada doesn't cut he says as his grin grows wider. 
Kissam then jerks the blade backwards, while the bandages on the tip of the sword are torn apart by a bunch of sharp purple blades that extend and rip the flesh off her shoulder and some of her arm. May cries out in pain as the flesh on her left shoulder and arm were shaved off by a bunch of blades. It shaves the flesh from your bones. He says and cackled like a madman. May drops Kenham and clutches her now bleeding arm while stepping backwards. Naruto who was pinned by Itachi to a tree from the strength of his sword, saw May on her knee clutching her left arm. May chan He screams out and then lets out a growl and increases his strength to push Itachi off who was surprised by his increase of strength. Get the hell out of my way. He yells and kicks Itachi away, who lets out a grunt and Naruto leaps over the Ichiha and runs towards Kisum, who had Samahada in the air again and bites his thumb, then performs a few hand seals. This time I'll shave that face of yours off. He says and brings the blade down, and Mei rolls to the side a while the sword hits the ground. Kissum smirks and does it again. Mei jumps back only for her arm to throb, and she clutches it even harder. Damn it he must have hit a nerve in my arm. She says. Kissum appears in front of her and brings the sword down on her head. Mei's eyes widen when she realizes she won't be able to make it. That was when the ground exploded and a black Komodo dragon appears out of it and opens its maw that was filled with razor-sharp teeth and snaps a Kissum's arm. The shark nin jumps back in order to avoid having his arm bitten off by the monitor lizard. Said creature hisses while green saliva dripped from his maw which hit the ground steam rose from the ground. Naruto appeared before Mei and helped her up. Mei-chan are you okay? He asks, but his eyes widened when he saw the blood running down her arm. I it's just a scratch Naruto-kun. Mei says but winces again at the throbbing of her arm. Naruto growls a kiss him and draws Shinkan no Akuhe and adds lightning chakra to the blade. I'm gonna fucking kill you, you overgrown sushi roll. He says while the swordsman of the mist grin and steps forward. Go ahead and try brat. I'll shave you and that little girl apart. He says but watches the dragon whose hissing got louder. Itachi appears before Kissum, but then his eyes narrow when he senses another chakra level which was very powerful. Kissum we must leave. Jiraiya is on his way and you know we're no match for him. He says while Kissum growls in frustration but sighs. Damn it just when things were getting interesting. You were lucky Mei, but next time I'll shave off your face. He says while Naruto's eyes become crimson. Try it and I'll you into chum you fucking mackerel. He says in a demonic tone while the shark man chuckles. Sorry kid, but you're 10 years from being on my level. He says and they leap away when a long pink tongue comes at them, but then retracts into a horse-sized toad that leaps and lands near Naruto and Mei Jiraiya, then appears near the toad and looks around for Itachi and kiss him, and then sighs. He sees Naruto with a first aid kit opened and was healing Mei's left shoulder and arm with green chakra. The black Komodo dragon dispels and Naruto then pulls out some disinfect and sprays it on Mei's shoulder and arm while she bites her lower lip from the steaming. He then pulls out some bandage wrap and starts to wrap it around the end of her shoulder and down to her forearm. Let me know if it's too tight Mei-chan. He says getting a nod from his future bride. After he was done she rips off the sleeve of her arm and throws it away. Thanks, Naruto-kun. She says and then gets up to retrieve Kenham. She then seals it back up into the same scroll and walks back to the others. Where the hell have you been Nero senin Naruto asks while Jiraiya looks at him. Hey now I was on my way Gaki. I can't help it if I'm not as fast as I was in my prime. He says while crossing his arms. Just be glad I showed up. He says while Naruto s sprout witches and sighs. That's not the point. Mei-chan got hurt because you were taking your precious time. He said while a tick mark appeared on his head. She's a cage for Kami's sake brat not a weakling. She could have handled those two on her own if she wanted. It's possible she underestimated Kissam and slipped. He says. Naruto was about to speak up at his words until Mei places a hand on his shoulder. He's right Naruto I did let my guards down for underestimating my former comrade and it could have cost me my life. I'm sorry if I worried you. She says while Naruto grabs her hand and strokes it. It's okay Mei-chan. Just try to be more careful alright. Naruto said getting a nod from her. Alright let's get going. We should be in Tenz Akugai after we leave town. Tsunade won't stay there for long. Jiraiya says and they head off to Tenz Akugai to find the next Hokage. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.